together, work through the COVID, and life is good. Thank you all. And I just want to say welcome. Okay, now at this point, we're going to have the invocation. And that will be, I guess, uh, the, the right, the, the Reverend Lewis Jones. There <laughs> <laughs> stand. Bow our heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that you are always with us in all that we do. We ask that you be with us this evening as we consider the affairs of this, our great city. Guide us and direct us in all that we do and all that we say. And when we leave, may we take your love and guidance with us. We pray in your holy name. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under, God, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. And Madam Clerk, do we have a roll call? Yes, Your Honor, all present. Okay. Um, at this point, I need a motion for the certification of the closed session. So moved. Second. Okay, motion and a second. The vote is open. By a vote of 11 to 0, you certify the closed session and be in accordance with the motion to recess. All righty. And then uh, we need a vote for the certification of the minutes of the informal and formal sessions of March 1st, 2022. So moved. Second. Uh, Mr. Jones, Mr. Tower, Mr. Holcomb, may I have your vote? By a vote of 9 to 0 with um, Councilmember Holcomb and Vice Mayor Wilson abstaining, you have approved the minutes as submitted. Oh, okay, it, this is great. This is one of our favorite parts where we get to honor people that really have made Virginia Beach such a great city that we are. <clears throat> and the first uh, one we're going to be doing, uh, honoring is James P. Sadler. And Sandra Sadler Baylor uh, will be accepting the honor. Would you come forward? I think and welcome. Okay, I am proud to raise this. Pete Smith, a reluctant visionary. Mayor. Yes. Mayor. Hold on a second. We got to do the nostalgic BB thing first, Mayor. Oh, uh, what's that? The, the video. Oh! <laughs> we have to do it. Oh, my God. Oh, forgive me. Oh. I guess the mayor doesn't want to hear from me today. Hi, Ray. How are you? When did you get here? Oh, my he goodness. He was so excited. He couldn't get the He was so excited to see you. No. <laughs> but you have to see me first. <laughs> so, so greetings to you, Mayor Dyer, Vice Mayor, um, um, Vice Mayor um, Willis, City Council members, City Managers, guests, and residents. I am Ray Pearson Ben from the Communications Office, and I thank you for the opportunity to update you on the Nostalgic VB campaign. It's an initiative that has prompted residents to send in copies of priceless home videos and uh, timeless still images and capturing their moments that make the city of Virginia Beach grand in the lives of, of theirs and the visitors that come to see them. We are showcasing those shared images in our social media, and we encourage the public to keep them coming. This year is moving pretty fast. It's already mid-March. And before you know it, we'll all come together to celebrate the city's 60th anniversary in January of 2023. But before we get that party started, let's journey back to 1973 to 77 and see what the residents of our great city were experiencing. Here's your first look at Nostalgic BB, Volume 3. The 70s were a breakthrough time of being both seen and heard in the city of Virginia Beach. 
women stepped out of the shadows to become champions of change in their own right, like Carol A. Johnston, who was hired as the first full-time female Virginia Beach police officer. And it was the 70s when the name Myra Obendorf was introduced to residents as the first female Virginia Beach City Council member. We will hear much more on her lasting impact in the decades to come. While those trailblazers were being seen, it was the sound of freedom that was being heard as the F-14 Tomcats began their assignment at NAS Oceana in 74. The wellness community was bolstered with the opening of Bayside Hospital, which had a 250-bed capacity. With the addition of commerce, schools, and wellness, the line, if you build it, they will come, proved correct. In the 70s, the population in Virginia Beach exploded, making our city nearly as popular as bell bottoms and disco. Uh, dramatic growth, uh, but by the time the city was formed, uh, the residents who were already here were somewhat used to dramatic growth. When you think about uh, that dramatic growth into the 70s and beyond, certainly the availability of land was an important part of it. Hundreds of acres of land and uh, the opportunity to build private homes. Not only did that land provide opportunities for housing, but it opened up creative opportunities as well. The first explanation was job opportunities. Um, and uh, part of that ex is explained by the military presence. In addition to that, of course, uh, there was tourism, but it wasn't that tourists came to settle here, it was the fact that tourism created jobs in the form of uh, housing, lodging, motels, restaurants. There were other high points in the 70s, like the city's purchase of Rose Hall, a site we now call the Francis Land House, a historic house in the Rose Hall district near Princess Anne Plaza. Not too far away was the opening of the Virginia Beach Farmer's Market on Princess Anne Road. Just before that, history was made with the successful conversion of an abandoned landfill into a city park called Mount Trashmore. And to celebrate all the pride in our growing city that the 70s had to offer was a thrilling street party and seafood festival on Atlantic Avenue that kicked off the first Neptune Festival and showcased James P. Sadler as our first King Neptune. If you have pictures or videos you'd like to share that captured the early days of Virginia Beach or proud reflections of what makes this city your home, we would love to hear from you. Visit vbgov.com forward slash nostalgic VB for step-by-step -step directions on how to get those pictures and videos to us. We thank you in advance for sharing. Now you can see Nostalgic VB Volume 1, Volume 2, and now Volume 3 on the city's YouTube channel. We invite you to subscribe, share, and visit often to catch up on city activity you may have missed. I would like to acknowledge Anya Linka for her outstanding work as videographer so far and editor on this project, as well as the stellar effort of the Virginia Beach Library Services. Our staff is truly second to none. This nostalgic VB campaign presents us with a beautiful opportunity to look back at history and recognize those responsible for moving our city forward. Today we have a couple of people we'd like to acknowledge. I would like to invite you, Mayor, for the reading of the first proclamation. As he gets in place, I'd like to invite Sandra Sadler Baylor to join me here at the podium. Yeah, the, the first one was a practice run. You did great. You got it down pat. I was pat. doing what I was told to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and trust me, I, uh, yeah, I got told, yeah. But let me put it this way. Welcome, and I am proud to read this. James B. Sadler, who offered himself as a servant leader to the city of Virginia Beach, throughout his life serving the whole of the community through his hard work and unwavering support, to elevate the profile of the city of Virginia Beach and enhance the quality of life for all our citizens. And whereas James B. Sadler has given his time and knowledge, earning the distinction in 1971 of first citizen of Virginia Beach and in 1974, 
selected to preside as first King Neptune at the inaugural supper, uh, celebration of the Virginia Beach Neptune Festival. James P. Sadler counted his duty to help shape the city in its beginning into a dynamic location that still unboiled the feeling of home and pride. Whereas James P. Sadler inspired others with his unyielding commitment to advancement projects to include past president of the Chamber of Commerce, member of the City Industrial Development Authority, contributor to the city radio station WBOF, member emeritus of the Virginia Beach Rescue Squad Foundation, past board member of the Virginia Beach General Hospital, and more, his efforts help establish the city as a premier coastal community. Whereas the city of Virginia Beach has greatly benefited, uh, benefited from James B. Sadler's dedication and his proclivity to answer a call or need for support, he is counted among the, city, uh, the city's residents and community contributors who have made Virginia Beach a unique and well-known place to live, work, and play. Whereas the community has been blessed by the wisdom and passionate advocacy of James P. Sadler, as he has fostered relationships with the citizens of Virginia Beach and within the Hampton Roads area. Whereas by exemplifying the model of citizenship and service to the city of Virginia Beach, James P. Sadler has mentored and empowered other citizens to contribute their skills and talents to the community. Whereas Nostalgic VB is a celebration of Virginia Beach pioneers and residents leading up to the 60th anniversary of our great city in January 2023. Therefore, I, Robert M. Bobby Dyer, Mayor of the City of Virginia Beach, do hereby proclaim James P. Sadler recipient of the Virginia Beach Diamond Award in Virginia Beach. And I call upon all the citizens and members within government agencies, public and private institutions, bus business and schools in Virginia Beach to be of service for the betterment and benefit of the community so that future generations can appreciate and further uplift our beloved city of Virginia Beach. In witness thereof, I hereunto set my hand caused, and caused by the official seal of the city of Virginia Beach to affirm the 15th day of March, 2022. Hmm. Let's, have, let's give a big hand. This many pages. That's great. Go for it. <laughs> Thank you. Can they take a picture? They wanted to take a picture with you. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. Go, Go ahead. You guys want to take a picture? Yeah, come on, come on up for a shameless photo op. I always tell people I got a great taste for radio. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to be seated. Oh, thank you. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and City Council members. It is such a pleasure to be here representing our father. Now tonight with me, I have two, two other daughters, four granddaughters, one great uh, grandson, 
they are all here with me tonight. I'm sorry the whole family couldn't be here. I'd like to tell you a few things about my dad that I'm not sure you know. He was a self-made man. After college at NC State, he went to sea. Upon crossing the North Atlantic 18 times as a merchant marine, he came back and joined Southern Materials, which was a family-owned company by Henry Clay Hoffheimer, then CEO, in 1935. He retired at age 45 uh, because he retired as senior vice president, remaining on the board until 1962 when it was sold to Lone Star. After forming a golf course, a bowling alley, hardware store, radio station WBOF, which stood for World's Beautiful Oceanfront, the Mariner Hope Motel, and the Cape Colony Club, now the Wyndham, he realized retirement was not for him. He was anxious to return to the concrete business. At age 50, he founded Sadler Materials Corporation. I never realized all our dad's accomplishments until Ray asked me to gather my family and be here tonight. In the 60s, <clears throat> dad saved the Upper Wolf Snare Plantation uh, from destruction for the Princess Anne County Historical Society. As you all heard, he is one of the founding, you did not hear this, one of the founders of Cape Henry Collegiate School, a member emeritus of the Rescue Squad Foundation, and president of the local chapter of the American Cancer Society. In 1971, our dad received the prestigious award of being Virginia Beach's first citizen. His civic projects were many, which afforded him this honor. I will mention only a few while he was president of the Virginia Beach Chamber of Commerce. Organizing the Committee of 100, which was a group that supported the city's economic development department. The Smile Campaign, on-the-job training for school dropouts, the construction of Virginia Beach General Hospital, now Centero, the Veterans Employment Program, and the Chamber-sponsored Tennis Tournament, and the creation of the area's first offshore fishing reef. He loved fishing, and he was a fisherman. In 1974, our father was chosen to be the first King Neptune. The Neptune Fe Festival was founded uh, to pull a struggling city together and gain identity. Finding one man most deserving of this honor to be the first king was not an easy task. On a very cold, windy night from the sea came our father, first King Neptune. Because of his business and civic activities to our community, we all knew that the committee had chosen the perfect person, a man who gives to his community by giving of himself. This honor was not a surprise to anyone except our father. He was a modest person who worked without thought of recognition. The work was there to be done, and he did it. An old friend of mine, Josh Darden, once said, and I quote, so much could be accomplished if one didn't worry about who got the credit. That was our dad, who 60 years ago was so dedicated to Virginia Beach becoming a city. Thank you for having me tonight. Welcome back. Mayor Dyer, um, it's <coughs> unfortunate that um, Pete Smith was unable to join us um, because of an emergency. However, um, I had the pleasure of really, and I want to tell you thank you so much for coming up with this idea and the assignment for me. Thank you so much because I have truly fallen in love with the city I already loved because I'm from here. But I had the pleasure of researching Pete Smith, and I would love it if you would read his proclamation. Mark Reed is here to accept his honor. That would be great. Mark, come on up. And I think what we see here is a sterling example that Virginia Beach has been a great city for a very long time. And how many people built the foundation 
of our city is why we are so great and we are such a community today. And this is a great, great initiative we're taking by honoring members of the past who gave us the future we have today. And that being said, whereas Pete Smith, a reluctant visionary with no desire for leadership and adoration, <laughs> rose to the occasion and helped the city of Virginia Beach beyond its beginnings as a quaint seaside and rural community, and through his unmatched imagination, elevated the profile and enhanced the quality of life for Virginia Beach citizens and visitors. Pete Smith has, has given up his time, opening the cities of Virginia Beach first dedicated surf shop, a joint venture that lead to additional locations, and his name, the Pete Smith Surf Shop. He also pioneered the East Coast Surfing Championship in 1963, a competition that is now the longest continuing running surfing event in the nation and the second longest in the world. Pete Smith helped put the city of Virginia Beach on the map in the eyes of the surfing culture from across the country and around the world. His efforts have resulted in visitors experiencing the city as an outstanding destination beyond the oceanfront and outside of the summer months. Whereas Pete Smith, the father of Virginia Beach surfing culture, is now a grandfather, the name Pete Smith continues to resonate amongst the surfing culture's most elite assets who still hail him as the East Coast godfather of surfing. Whereas the city of Virginia Beach has greatly benefited from Pete Smith's dedication, he is counted among the city's residents and community contributors who have made Virginia Beach a unique and well-known place to live, work, and play. And whereas the community has been blessed by the wisdom and passionate advocacy of James P. Sadler as he fostered relationship with, with the citizens of Virginia Beach and within the Hampton Roads area. By exemplify the model of citizenship of service, Sadler has been empowered to become, uh, you know, uh, uh, mentored and empowered the citizens. Nostalgic VB of Virginia Beach pioneers and residents led us up to the 60th anniversary of our great city. And therefore, I, Robert M. Dyer, Mayor of the City of Virginia Beach, do hereby proclaim Pete Smith, recipient of Virginia Beach Diamond Award. And I tell you, we got to honor two very outstanding people today. I know Pete's a very humble guy, and he um, would never have expected to be recognized as y'all have recognized him today. And he is, um, he's very proud of that. Um, he's kind of the proverbial um, pebble in the pond. You know, he, he did little things that became really big things here in Virginia Beach. He, yes, he obviously is the biggest thing that, uh, that has come out of uh, his legacy. But um, the whole surfing culture uh, really uh, has really grown from him and his efforts and those who were with him, like Bob Holland, several people uh, who really, in the 60s and into the 70s, created this culture that is part of the history of Virginia Beach. And thank you so much tonight for, uh, for recognizing Pete and, and the, the surfing culture here in Virginia Beach. Uh, you thank, thank you, and I'll tell you what our surfing is uh, very proud, and uh, we we have the announcement that we're taking it to the next level with the wor world 
uh, surf league, and we're going to have the top professionals in the world coming right here to Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach is back, my friends. Thank you, and God bless you. Um, and this resolution uh, for Julie Shiflett, um, I, I asked of the honor to be done by Councilwoman Sabrina Wooten. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, as this is Women's History Month, uh, it is my honor uh, to honor women in our community who are doing or have done great things. And so last week we, or the first council me uh, meeting, we honored uh, Dr. Angela Reddix. This week we will honor Julie Shiflett. She'd like to approach the podium. Yeah, please, come on up. And as you uh, approach the podium, just want to say uh, a special thank you to BZ and Harvey Shiflett, your parents, for their commitment to um, our community uh, just by really uh, creating a, and maintaining a first-class facility in Virginia Beach that promotes tennis uh, as well as their country club. And uh, they continue to enrich and inspire the lives of people in our community. And now I'd like to read the resolution that honors you. Um, what really came to mind, uh, you came to mind when I uh, was informed that you were recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. And so uh, that is a huge accomplishment. And I just want to congratulate you on that as well. Thank you so much. And so whereas in 1980, President Jimmy Carter issued the first presidential proclamation declaring the week of March 8th as National Women's History Week. The U.S. Congress followed suit the next year, passing a resolution establishing a national celebration. Six years later, the National Women's History Project successfully petitioned Congress to expand the event to the entire month of March. And whereas the National Women's History Alliance designates a yearly theme for Women's History Month, with 2022 theme being Women Providing Healing, Promoting Hope. This theme is both a tribute to the ceaseless work of caregivers, frontline workers during this ongoing pandemic, and also a recognition of thousands of ways that women of all cultures have provided both healing and hope throughout history. And whereas Julie Shiflett, as a junior player, was a top in the Mid-Atlantic section at the age of 10 and throughout her entire junior career. And whereas Julie, at the age of 14, won the National Easter Bowl Championship and became the youngest player ever to win the girls' 16 and under National Clay Court title. The very next summer, Julie set another junior record by winning the event again for two back-to-back -back National Clay Court titles. And whereas, Julie played in her first professional tournament at the age of 15 and competed in many professional events, including the U.S. Open, the Family Circle Cup, the Miami Open, the Pan Pacific Open, and many other WTA tournaments all around the world. And whereas Julie went on to play a number, uh, or to play number one at the College of William and Mary and led the team to the CAA title, as well as a national team ranking of 14 in her freshman year. And whereas Julie was an All-American and finished her freshman season ranking number seven in the country, earning CAA Player of the Year. And whereas Julie turned pro after her freshman year of college and ranked in the top 200 before suffering a career-ending shoulder injury in 1994. After retirement, Julie returned to William & Mary and received her bachelor's degree in psychology. And whereas Julie is an optimist and a motivator who loves to help players reach their full potential, she has coached at regional and national training centers around the country, working with numerous top-ranked Mid-Atlantic and nationally ranked players who have received Division I college scholarships. And whereas with her strong background in psychology, experience and 
passion for the game of tennis, Julie is an excellent coach for players of all ages and levels. Julie received her professional training certificate or certification from the National Academy of Sports Medicine and is able to scope complete players capable of playing at the highest levels. And whereas Julie and her husband operate the Davidson Tennis Academy at the Virginia Beach Tennis and Country Club, or there are over 50 high-performing players and 40 current beginners, beginning students participating. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Virginia Beach City Council honors Julie Shiflett for her efforts to serve the community by way of growing the game of tennis while developing community relationship with players, fans, and the community at large. Be it therefore resolved that the City of Virginia Beach uh, City Council pauses during this formal deliberations the 15th day of March 2022 in honor of Women's History Month to recognize Julie Shiflett. a few words, Julie, All right. and congratulations and well-deserved. Thank you so much. This is such a, an amazing honor. I've always been so proud to represent Virginia Beach as a player back in the day and now as a coach. Um, just really want to carry on all the great things from this city and proud to represent. So thank you so much this, for this award. And thank you so much for what you have done and accomplished and what you're going to continue to do. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> okay, great. A great part of what we do on City Council is honoring those who deserve the honors. <laughs> okay. Next up, the crowning of Mia Elena Kalim, National Elite Miss Teen Virginia. This is a first for me. This is the first for me at the council meeting. And I don't know about Barbara and Lewis. And Lewis. Is this the first for y'all, too? <laughs> so, precedent setting. You're beautiful the like your mom. You're beautiful like your mom. Is this down here? That's just a moment. Do that. Let me put this on you. Oh, yeah. Please. <laughs> and what an honor it is. Do. Now, do we have something we're supposed to say or do, or no. just, just you want to face your? <laughs> Good face your... <laughs> Facing her subject. Yes. Right. <laughs> well, you are queen. Yes. Yes. She is representing uh, the state of Virginia in Texas for the National Elite Miss United States of America. This crown just got really heavy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can see why she has that honor. She's beautiful like her mom. Congratulations, and I crown you queen. Excuse me. Hope it stays on. Nice. <laughs> Why I should be doing this and not Bobby. 
He's better at this than I would be. Okay. Notice she's using bobby bits. So. <laughs> Okay, there we go. There we go. Congratulations. I want to copy the picture. I want to copy one of the pictures. <laughs> would you like to say something? No. I don't, I don't have a speech prepared. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Okay, uh, next up is public comment on Pembroke Mall redevelopment. Well, we have one speaker, Barbara Messner. Good evening. Um, oh, Mr. Holcomb's back again. All right. Um, Pembroke, Pembroke Mall redevelopment. I wish you would have introduced uh, Dr. Shiflett. He's part of the history, and he helped create, you know, the tennis center, and he has a successful practice. But getting back to Pembroke Mall, requested by Moss, we have... Uh, we have uncontrolled growth. Um, Pembroke Mall is a landmark. That's one of the first uh, shopping centers. Some of those people are already displaced. Um, Town Center was opposed in the late 90s, early 2000s because of eminent domain abuse. That's how Town Center was built. And a lot of y'all are connected to the Town Center developers, Armada Hoffler, DeVaris, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and a lot of you have conflicts because Venture Realty is part of this project. It's also, um, you know, Dominion Energy property, um, you know, is involved here. And Venture Realty is Napolitano's, uh, Doug Ellis, and... Um, part of Will Sesson's family with Town Bank. So I'm in opposition. Uh, the number one duty of the city isn't to help any developers. And when we have traffic, I, it is horrible that you aren't taking care of the roads with all these fatalities and crashes every day. People, you know, take their lives in the hands to go to work or to school that uh, you shouldn't be using air money to lease land for a dollar a year or to sell it at a loss and help developers. So I'm, I'm opposed. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the speakers got out of Yes, Mr. Moss. I just want the audience to know I did not request this project. All I wanted to make sure is that according to the city council's process, we had a public hearing before we voted in April. So I don't want anyone to walk away thinking that Mr. Moss requested the project. I just requested that we have the right process for the project. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Okay, at this point, uh, I'm going to read the speaker's policy. I want to remind everyone that the City Council speaker policy that allows certain representatives of groups to speak for 10 minutes applies only to planning items. All other speakers, whether speaking individually or on behalf of a group, will have three minutes to speak. Speakers are reminded that comments during the formal portion of the meeting must be limited to the subject of the item that is being considered by the council at the time you are called. When speakers are called on each item, the speaker, the clerk will call for those individuals who have signed up to speak. We have several items with only one speaker signed up. As such, the city clerk will call the speaker and identify each item they have been registered on. 
The speaker will receive three minutes to comment on each item. Again, the speaker must limit his or her comments to the subject matter of the items they have signed up to address. Finally, I call upon all speakers and all persons in the chamber to be civil in their discussions and decorum. Whatever views you hold and wish to express, the City Council wants to hear from you and to ensure all the viewpoints and all persons are respected. The best way to do this is for all of us to uh, strive for civility and respect. Madam Cl uh, Clerk, do we have speakers? Um, I need you to do the public hearings. Uh, I only did public comments. The, public. the Atlantic Park. Oh, the Atlantic Park. Okay, I really don't. Okay, Atlantic Park. So we have one speaker, um, Barbara Messner. Good evening. Um, it, it's really sad that there's so many uh, distractions, so many things going on, and people don't have time to, you didn't even publish the agenda properly. It was only one time, and it's 588 pages. OK, um, Atlantic Park. Um, this is the old dome site, Allen B. Shepherd. It's a historic landmark. And then you use historic landmark credits for the developers. And you were just talking about a surfer coming here. We don't need a surf park and every other incarnation of, you know, joining with Pharrell Williams for this. Um, like I said, we have. That was this air municipal parking lot. We don't have parking. Um, it says adopted September 7th, 2021. Um, and one of the reasons that uh, Pharrell, even though he likes, you know, the deals with the money and the free venues and the convention center and everything else, is he was given 250000 He didn't pay for something in the water. And the schools all, they all approved 350000 to use their bus drivers and buses. And now you want to keep re replacing buses. So I'm opposed to the development here because you, you cannot replace parking at the oceanfront. You've already moved police, fire, rescue further back. Um, and... Ms. Wilson ran once, I don't know how many times she's run, uh, on different incarnations of whatever district is going on at the latest moment. You know, parking, and then you open up parking for the winter, but it's two hour limits. There really isn't parking, traffic's terrible. Um, the potholes all over the place, the construction, there's, there's so many OSHA, violations, EPA violations. This is when uh, Building 2 was uh, refurbished. The windows were wide open. It has asbestos. All those workers and even the air was, you know, floating asbestos. So y'all aren't doing your duties. And thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome very much. Okay, next, uh, that was the only speaker? Yes, sir. Okay, next is the uh, public hearing on CAFE franchise agreements. We have one speaker, Ms. Messner. Thanks, Terry. Okay, this just shows that people either don't care, don't know, or don't want to be insulted by all of you with your fake Caring please, about the citizens. Stick to the it, subject. it is. It is the subject. The subject is you. Y'all are ultimately re responsible for everything that goes on in the city, regardless of who you hire and what they say and do. Okay. So she just said I could go sit down. So 
All right, which one is this that no one signed up for? Is this the cafes? Cafe Franchise Freedom. Okay. Yes, and I'm 100,000% against the cafes. Uh, I don't know if you notice, um, you know, there's so much unfair competition to begin with, with these cafes that are up and down the oceanfront, um, Doughboys, Mediterranean Grill, Mahi Ma's, who's already been sold, on and on and on. There's, um, we have, I, I don't know if it's been changed or not, but ABC hasn't been doing anything about, you know, underage drinking or drinking. There's a law that it's against the law to consume and serve alcohol in public, and now you're delivering it. And the article in the paper about um, Chick-fil-A, you know, they're being sued because of all the traffic problems because here in Virginia Beach, you've already had a major crash on General Booth, which I've sent y'all pictures of. Terrible, terrible right there. And you have to, it's discrimination. It's unfair to the other businesses that have been in the city forever. Um, so you shouldn't be leasing city land to, um, to, to private restaurants so they can expand onto the uh, greenway and boardwalk, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we, have, we have major problems with people drinking, gambling. Everything y'all do is, is bad for the city. Where's the equal treatment, you know, in something healthy? and fun for the, for the kids and for the military who zoom around like crazy because they're bored out of their minds. So um, is it three minutes for each one or just three minutes for all of them, correct? Mm -hmm. That's three minutes for all of them. There, there can be, if you can do it, uh, encapsulate it for all, we would It was one public it. hearing ad, Mayor. It were, you know, right, yeah, I know, but usually... Um, each item. Yeah, yeah, in case people want to see... Look at yeah. look at the list. Yeah. It's um it's A through um yeah. Q. Yeah, I know. It's um and those people vote for y'all and donate to your campaign. Okay. So Thank that's you another very reason. Much. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. and you're gonna be here for uh you know the consent items. I, I read the speaker policy, so okay. we're ready to go. I just want to confirm with Vice Mayor the only items that are being pulled. RK1, A and B, K5, K6, and L1. Is that correct? And I'm L, sorry. Um, nine. L9 just had one speaker. It was just the applicant. Okay. L6 needs to be pulled. Okay, so oh, yeah, L6 needs to be pulled, too. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. Go on consent. L nine. Okay. Consent. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so under ordinances and resolution K one five six, and page three is seven. Is that correct, Miss Barnes? Um, K one, A and B. Mm -hmm. K five and six are being pulled. Okay, but not seven. Correct. So okay. you can speak on all the other items at this point. Okay. Like I said, it's a pretty day. I don't blame people for not coming. And if certain people didn't support me and show up, I wouldn't be here because it's a lost cause when people don't know or care what's going on. Okay, so K1 is pulled, A and B. Two, amend. The calendar year 2022 tax levy and on personal property, machinery, and tools to provide revenue offsets requested by Mr. Mr. Rouse, who's leaving soon, running for something else. Okay. Um, congratulations, Mr. Hokey, Red Tail Hokey. Okay. All right, sorry, but you know, your pictures with Elaine Loria and Mr. Tower, you know, it really upsets us because y'all don't, you don't reply. Please stick to the agenda. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Okay. Um, you know, you give tax breaks, Virginia Economic Development Authority, which has a debt, um, to special interests, including steel, chainsaws, who advertise on TV, Aldi's, Lidl's, on and on and on. Um, so there, it, it's discrimination to help other people, especially other countries, with air money, air debt, and air land. So um, if we're running out of money, you're not taxing everybody. And a lot of people are aware that everybody doesn't pay taxes in the city. OK. Um, tangible pers personal property of a business that qualifies for business license incentive program for new business. But what about the existing businesses like Neptune's Corner and Abbey Road Restaurant that helped build this city? OK, B, a motor vehicle owned and used primarily by or for someone for at least 65 years of age or anyone found to be permanently and totally disabled. Um, and all these antique cars, they don't have to have inspections and they don't have to pay taxes. Um, so, yeah, okay, that's two, three. Resolution to refer to planning commission, who you appoint, Mr. Tahan, uh, Ms. Smith, on and on. A lot of the employees are super nice, but they are told, they've even told you who, um, I can't think of the word special interest, you know, that they want to help the business owners, but you don't want to help the citizens who live close to them. Okay. Um, an ordinance to add section 2095, delete section 242.1, amend section 901 of the city zoning ordinances, CZO, Ray tattoo parlors and body piercing establishments as permitted use in the B Business 2 zoning district. Requested by Ms. Wilson and Mr. Berlucci. Okay, you know, there should be a limit to how many alcohol establishments, how many tattoo parlors, and in what neighborhoods, and that um, the Minx uh, strip club, and then what is the thing, you know, all the kids shouldn't be seeing all these lingerie things, these stores. You should, you should care about what our children see and what adults that have some morals and manners want to see in public. So, uh, you know, there just needs to be a limit to these things, that's all, and where they are. Okay, four. Uh, Resolution to revise membership, I want to say revile, membership of the 531 Memorial Committee requested by Berlucci and Wooten. Y'all shouldn't even be there. Only one person, Jason Nixon, one family member is on there, and you have it on conflicting days and times, and that meeting, is, meeting location at Town Center is horrible. So no council members. Uh, should be on there, and every family member that has applied who hasn't gotten it should be there. And you know, a lot of people are speaking out now at these meetings that have never spoken out before, survivors who haven't been compensated, and they haven't been respected. You know, it's really upsetting for me. I've been holding this thing up since uh, since July, and I've attended all the meetings with uh, Hillard Hines, and I don't know. It's just, I'm glad I'm here to speak for some of these people. A lot of the families live out of town, out of state, and a lot of them are too traumatized, and they don't have time to keep coming here. Some of them have children, and they work. So, okay. So no one else is here on that, Ms. Barnes? 
Okay, that, that's fine. I'm glad to speak for them. Five and six are pulled. Seven. Grant 17 franchise agreements, Ray, outdoor cafe in the resort area. Uh, Ocean 15, Mediterranean Grill, Atlantic and Pacific, 1508 Atlantic, Virginia George Corporation, Doughboys, I think that's Cateritas, I'm, I'm not sure, but they were one of the first ones to serve alcohol on the sidewalk and have people drive up. You know, like Abbey Road, they didn't have a parking, so you helped certain people during the pandemic, your friends. So we shouldn't have... People should be able to walk on the sidewalks. You shouldn't have uh, cafes on every sidewalk in uh, grassy knolls, etc. Okay, Beach Convenience, LLC, um, Sweet Spot Cafe, Young Veterans, LLC, Bunker Brew Pub. You know, where are, there's nothing for, um, for the veterans. You know, some of them don't want to drink. Everything, you know, is a brew pub. And most of, the, most of the breweries do not have to serve food. They don't have to have a restaurant uh, license. Okay. Arnav Hotel Barkley Towers. They get to use the 9th Street parking garage, 809 Atlantic Avenue. And I think it's 8th Street that was closed, but it's parking for... Uh, Mike Standing at Waterman's, who now has um, the shack, Waterman's, and he was allowed to, he made more money. Green Flash Brewery made more money during the pandemic. Your priorities drive me up the wall, and I don't mind saying so. Okay, Mahi Maz, that was sold by uh, Thompson and Ruffin. Okay. Ocean Waterfront Cafe, 19th and Atlantic, Osprey Respublic, um, 2207 Atlantic. How many cafes do we need? How much alcohol? And then who's going to do anything when they drive, drive home drunk? Okay, uh, 1101 Atlantic Avenue, Atlantic Enterprises, 2901 Atlantic, for sales, timeshare owners. Uh, 33rd and Boardwalk. Okay. Ahata Incorporated, Pier 23 Cafe, 20, 22nd and Atlantic, Virginia George Doughboys Pizza, 3224 Atlantic. They have at least two locations. Thank you, Ms. Messner. Okay. Number eight. All right. Ordinance to amend and reordain Section 10-1 of the City Code, re changing name of polling places from Lanstown Community Church to Restoration Church at Lanstown. You know, these elections have, are all messed up ever since uh, Will Sessoms won his last election and then he, he resigned. Um, but no one's done anything to fix the polling stations. We should have permanent polling stations. The convention center should be one. <coughs> you know, I've mentioned this before. Um, like SeaTac, which is really just a community, a small community thing. It couldn't even, shouldn't even be considered a rec center. Um, there, there's no parking there. Um, so, you know, we have a major problem with their elections. And... You know, everyone isn't notified in town. In time, there's a lot of military. So, uh, and the people that are oversight, you know, have conflicts, even though one's supposedly a Democrat and a Republican. You know, most of us are aware that it's the parties fund the candidates, and, you know, it's just a system. Okay, nine is pulled. Ten? Nine is not pulled. Oh, nine is not pulled. Okay. Ordinance to approve the assignment of the franchise 
Re operation and maintenance of the Virginia Beach Fishing Pier to Virginia Beach Fishing Pier, LLC, and that's the Saboni family. Um, yeah, I wish I had time to print it out because uh, Bruce Thompson was part of this uh, project, and um, the Lockman family, the Bonnies, you know, um, and Miss Wooten, you you had a picture taken. The Caps family was in on that too. Um, no, we should have helped the uh, <coughs> the Lockmans and those people keep the, the fishing pier. It's one of the the best landmarks in the city. Uh, so, you know, I'm just opposed that y'all have your hands in uh, the. In the redesign that uh, Jim Spore started when he left, uh, reinvent Hampton Roads. We shouldn't be reinventing our city. We should be honoring all those pictures of what it used to be. That's when it was safe and, you know, people were happy and, you know, we had access to our beach, free parking. Okay, 10? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Resolution to authorize City Manager, Mr. Duhaney. You know, I, I mention it because you and the police chief, you know, go to certain civic leagues, but, you know, you, you know, I met with you. It was nice to you when you came. You have yet to, you know, answer an email or respond to the, the lights out at uh, two intersections. Okay, please stick okay. to the item at hand. I am. It's the City Manager. I am. You should know who's who in the city. You, you vote for who gets hired. To place advertisements, Ray, various permit and inspection fee increases as part of the 2022-2023 budget process. And you're running the ads in the beacon in, instead of um, putting it in with their bills and doing it in advance time. The beacon dropped from like 200, 250,000 circulation, which is really uh, Chicago Tribune um, for the Daily Press and, and the pilot. So we're spending too much money and the print is microscopic and it isn't always run in a timely manner. And most people, the ones that do get the beacon, they get it because of the sports and, um, you know, other things. But most of this stuff's online. And you, you just change the city website again, and it's even harder to see anything. And when you, you know, me mentioned uh, one of the people, I won't say her name again, but it very hardworking uh, video staff. They should not be doing all this 60th anniversary stuff because you can't even keep up. The school board meeting isn't even up. You give them too many things to do and you tell them when to turn, you know, because there's awards, you know, the, the video cam's on today. But that, that thing, you know, with all the scrolls at the bottom and the weather by the side and you're using... Um, Channel 46, 47, and 48 for all your history of Virginia Beach, which should start in January of uh, next year, not now. Um, and you shouldn't reduce the size of the actual meeting, you know, on the screen. It's, it's distracting. You're violating Americans with Disability Act again. Okay? Is that it? You signed up for every item. Okay, there's three more, and you said one is pulled. Uh, no, let's see, 13? Um, okay. 11, 12, and 13, you signed okay. up for one as well. Okay, all right, I'll wait till you reset. I'm ready. Okay. Uh, it, it's just really sad that, like I said, people don't know, or they know that certain people fall asleep and, you know, look the other way or whatever. There's a reason people don't show up anymore. Okay, um, authorized temporary encroachment into a portion of city-owned property. Um, P 
people who own property, you know, there's two people that want boat lifts, uh, you know, piers, everything. Part of the reason they do this is because it costs too much and the traffic's bad for the, uh, what used to be free, the Owls Creek boat ramp. And people can't get to the oceanfront or pay for these things, so they're, they're putting all this stuff in their backyard, but they shouldn't use city property to do it. That's unfair to everyone else. Okay, 12, ordinance to extend the sunset date, April 5th, 2023, Ray Residential Parking in the historic Cavalier Shores neighborhood. So you're extending special residential parking permits for your friends that live there and approve the, the demolition of, uh, of the historic landmark. The historic landmark did not have 85 residences that were sold by a council member's wife that isn't here now, but he works it somewhere else. So, um, you know, what you do with parking is total discrimination, and you allow the short-term rental people to pay, and other people, anybody, to pay $70 an hour or $70 a month to park in the garages. There's no room in the garages. They were not, anybody that remembers the Mahoney's, they, they laughed that the parking garage was for the public. Um, when you did eminent domain and, and took their, that was a public parking that was free for the residents. Okay, so that's it, correct? Man, I'm sorry. <laughs> Where are we even at? Open uh, okay, I'm opening open uh, uh, planning items. So number two, the only ones that are pulled is number one. And six. And six. One and six. One and six. So no one's here for one their... six are pulled, ma'am. I didn't finish my question, Ms. Barnes. Time okay. All right. So no one is here to speak for, um, for their request for a uh, conditional use permit. I, I don't think if they're not willing to show up uh, that they should automatically be approved. Okay. Um, 1252. Oh, you said one was pulled, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Number two is where you start. Okay. Please. That's okay. Some people get paid to be here. I don't. Okay. Whitney Triplin Pass, James Pass. Okay. Conditional use permit, Ray Family Daycare. Formerly, um, formerly District 2, Kemsville. Sometimes it says formally, sometimes it doesn't. And that still hasn't been settled as far as I know. Y'all are still paying over $10 million. Okay, formerly Kempsville. Um, yeah, we don't have enough people to check on all these daycares. It's nothing personal against anyone. People, a lot of people are doing daycare because they don't like this. What's going on with the schools, the mask, et cetera, for our kids. Um, okay, well, only one person's supposed to be talking. Okay, well they can whisper. Okay. Okay. You know, we were respectful for all your 60th anniversary things. I don't think my time should be taken up with someone else speaking. And you're supposed to know what Robert's Rules of Parliamentary Procedure are, Mr. Dyer. Okay. Well, I was asking the clerk a question. Uh, which she's supposed to be helping me. You know, other people can wait if she's doing what she's supposed to be doing. Okay, like I said, um, as Ms. Henley and Mr. Moss and Mr. Jones used to talk about with the short-term rentals, we don't have staff. You know, we don't have enough police, um, you know, to take care of, um, of everything that goes on in the city. There's just too many tragedies that are preventable if you had a full police force and they were allowed to do what they're supposed to do. Okay? All right. Uh, three. Um, N3, property advisors. 
Virginia Beach Investment Company, LLC, Corporation, Limited Liability Corporation, Conditional Use Permit for Automotive Repair Garage, 6213 Indian River Road, District 1, formerly District 1, Centerville. And, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, from the news, you know, crime is moving everywhere in the city. But um, automotive garage, I, I don't know. I, I'm just, um, the city has too many things on here. And we, the people who do want to do it, you know, pay attention. We don't have time to read 588. You know, one, one meeting was 1,075 pages. You're piling too much on. Okay, four. NMPCF Fairfield S slash C LLC Limited Liability Conditional Use Permit Mini Warehouse. 5312 Fairfield Shopping Center, formerly District 2, Chemistville. Okay, oh. There's many warehouses all over the city, and you've approved allowing them, including Prime Storage, which is, um, you know, Bells Road and Birdneck, and some of these other places. They're allowed to have storage outside of the, the units. You're allowing them property that, uh, that they shouldn't have. Everything should be stored, especially with all the problems of theft and everything. So I'm opposed to uh, more mini warehouses. You know, when George Minns was alive, he tried to fight, you know, all these things in his neighborhood. And everyone, if they were aware, and if they thought you would pay attention to them, would, would oppose, you know, um, a conditional use permit. You, you don't enforce anything. Okay, five. Um, another tattoo parlor. Formerly District 3, Rose Hall, Mr. Berlucci. Okay, like I said, how many, how many do you need and how many close to people's neighborhoods and how many visible from the street? You know, there was a time when certain things, you know, Norfolk cleaned up Granby Street at one time, um, but everything moved to Virginia Beach because anything goes. Okay, six is pulled, seven. Seven in planning. And then all those appointments that we don't get to speak on, where you appoint yourselves and your buddies. Okay. Okay, Regency Hilltop Associates. Another tattoo parlor. Guy Tower, uh, formerly Beach District who even appoints his wife to things and himself. And, you know, Kaufman and Canoles, who we've been hiring, you know. It's too bad people don't know what's going on and that certain people, you know, I had five Facebook pages with all this information, but I know who took them down and eventually it will be exposed. Uh, eight, CNC Development Company. Short-term rental, 501 22nd Street, units A and B, um, formerly Beach District. That's, um, that's the expressway. Expressway out. It goes right past, um, anyway, we don't need more short-term rentals. Where's the picture? You know, when Mr. Tower says, oh, there's no problems there, you know, you help, you help Croatan, you help your neighborhoods, but you don't help everyone else. Okay, this is, uh, this is 27th Street, but all these places down there, look at all those trash cans and the hotels, you know, anybody that drives there sees all the hotels. This is high density. These are little teeny I think they're probably 600, 800 square feet, and they're going to be short-term rentals. So it's just, there's no parking. And their guests, where are their guests going to stay at the, uh, 
Where's the place that you live, Miss Wilson? I forget. Um, anyway, you know, all right. So that's 501 22nd, and then there's one more. 21st, short-term rental, conditional use permit, Unit 6C, formerly Beach District, Mr. Tower. Um, and that's the expressway uh, coming into the beach. And you've moved parking meters all the way back. There's even parking meters near uh, wave riding vehicles. So everything is cha-ching parking, you know. Thank you. Mayor, I'm sorry, so I had a citizen approach me. She would like to speak on, um, under ordinance resolutions number three, re referring the ahead, item please. back. So do you want to pull that and, and hear yeah. that separately now? Or Ms. Messner has already can she is, is it a one person item? Well, Ms. Messner already spoke oh, on then it. Then we, I think we're gonna have to pull it. Yeah, and that was item three? Item three, yes, under ordinances or resolutions. Okie dokie. All right, Madam Clerk, if you could do the honors. Or uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Okay. Oh, good God. Okay, under ordinances and nights. resolutions. Uh, number two, ordinances to amend the calendar year 2022 tax levy and personal property and machine and, mature, machine and tools and to provide revenue offsets requested by Council Member Rouse regarding a tangible personal property of a business that qualifies for business there's a lot of talking. Okay. Folks, if we can ask the gallery to be, you know, be respectful. For business license incentive program for new businesses and B, motor vehicles owned and used primarily by and for someone at least 65 years of age or anyone found to be permanently and totally dis disabled. Number four, resolution to revise membership of the 531 Memorial Committee requested by council members Bellucci and Wooten. Number seven, <clears throat> ordinance to grant 17 franchise agreements regarding outdoor cafes in the resort area. A, Ocean 15, Inc., trading as Mediterranean Grill Cafe regarding Sidewalk Atlantic to Pacific Cafe at 1508 Atlantic Avenue. B, Virginia George Company, Inc., trading as Doughboys Cafe regarding Sidewalk Atlantic to Pacific Cafe at 1700 Atlantic Avenue. C, Beach Convenience LLC, trading as the Sweet Spot Cafe, regarding Sidewalk Atlantic to Pacific Cafe at 1718 Atlantic Avenue. D, Young Veterans LLC, trading as the Bunker Brew Pug, regarding Sidewalk Atlantic to Pacific Cafe at 211 21st Street. C, Arnav 138 Hotel LLC, trading as Barclay Towers Cafe, regard Boardwalk Cafe at 809 Atlantic Avenue. F, La Haranda. La Herradura 4 LLC, trading as La Herradura Cafe regarding Sidewalk Atlantic to Pacific Cafe at 2006 Atlantic Avenue. G, Mahi Ma's LLC, trading as Mahi's Cafe regarding Boardwalk Cafe at 615 Atlantic Avenue. <clears throat> H, 3107 Atlantic LLC, trading as North Beach Bar and Pizza Cafe regarding Boardwalk Cafe at 3107 Atlantic Avenue. I, Osprov Res Public Inc. Trading as Ocean House Waterfront Cafe regarding Boardwalk Cafe at 1905 Atlantic Avenue. J. Osprov Res Public Inc. Trading as Johnny Manassas Cafe regarding Boardwalk Cafe at 2207 Atlantic Avenue. K. Atlantic Sands Inc. Trading as Calypso Cafe regarding Boardwalk Cafe at 1101 Atlantic Avenue. L. Atlantic Enterprises Inc. Trading as Oceanfront Inc. Cafe regarding Boardwalk Cafe at 2901 Atlantic Avenue. M, For Sales Timeshares Owners Association, Inc., trading as Katie's at 33, 33rd Street, regarding Boardwalk Cafe at 3301 Atlantic Avenue. N, Ahata, Inc., trading at Pier 23 Cafe, regard Sidewalk, Atlantic Pacific Cafe at 2224 Atlantic Cafe. O, Virginia George Company, Inc. Trading as Doughboys Cafe regarding Sidewalk Atlantic to Pacific Cafe at 3224 Atlantic Avenue. P. 
Tampico Enterprises, Inc. Trading is Abbey Road Cafe regarding Sidewalk Atlantic to Pacific Cafe at 203 22nd Street. And Q, Lunacy, Inc. Trading is Lunacy Cafe regarding Sidewalk Atlantic to Pacific Cafe at 206 22nd Street. Number eight, ordinance to amend and record, I'm sorry, ordinance to uh, amend and re ordain section 10.1 of the city code to changing name of polling place from Lansdown Community Church to Restoration Church at Lansdown. Number nine, ordinance to approve the assignment of the franchise reoperation and maintenance of the Virginia Beach Fishing Pier to VB Fishing Pier LLC. Number 10, the resolution to authorize the city manager and city clerk to place an advertisement regarding various pit and, uh, permit inspection fee increases versus as part of the FY 2022-23 budget process with Mr. Moss voting no. Number 11, <clears throat> ordinances to authorize temporary encroachments into a portion of city owned property. A, known as Bass Inlet, located at the rear of 2909 Sandpiper Road, regard construct and maintenance of wooden pier and boat lift District 2, formerly District 7, Princess Anne. B, known as Treasure Canal, located at the rear of 2209 Leeward Shore Drive, regarding construct and maintenance boat leaf timber pier and rip rat revetment. District 8, formerly District 5, Lynn Haven. <clears throat> Number 12, ordinance to extend the sunset dry, the sunset date to April 5th, 2023, regarding residential parking in the historic Cavalier Shores neighborhood. Number 13, ordinance to accept $15,604 from the Virginia Aquarium Foundation appropriate to capital project number 10463, Virginia Renewal and Replacement 3, regarding the refurbish the Ray Touch Pool exhibit. And open a public hearing on planning. Okay. Number two, the Whitney Triplin Pass, James Pass and Whitney Triplin Pass for conditional use permit regarding a family daycare at 952 Timberlake Drive. District 1, formerly District 2, Kempsville. Number 3, N3 Property Advisors, Virginia we Beach. we pull 3? No. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, Virginia Beach Investment Company, LLC, for conditional use permit regarding automobile repair <coughs> garage at 6213 Indian River Road, District 1, formerly District 1, Centerville. Number four, NMP-C4 Fairfield SC LLC for a conditional use permit regarding mini warehouse at 5312 Fairfield Shopping Center, District 3, formerly District 2, Kempsville. Number five, Danielle Good and Cynthia Schott, Byler Lakes LLC for a conditional use permit regarding tattoo parlor at 522 South Independence Boulevard, District 3, formerly District 3, Rose Hall. Number six is pulled. Number seven, Tandang. Regency Hilltop Associates for conditional use permit regarding a tattoo parlor at 1940 Laskin Road, Suite 311, District C, formerly District 6 Beach. Number eight, CNC Development Company, Inc. for conditional use permit regarding short-term rentals at 501 22nd Street, units A and B, District 6, formerly Beach 6 Beach. And uh, number nine, Cynthia Leanger for a conditional use permit regarding a short-term rental at 2113 Atlantic Avenue, Unit 6C, District 6, formerly District 6 Beach. That Outstanding it. work. Thank you very much. Okay, do we have a motion? So moved. Move. Second. Second. The vote is open. By a vote of 11 to 0, you have um, approved the consent agenda as read by Vice Mayor Wilson, noting Mr. Moss's nay vote. Okay, we will now go forward and under ordinances and resolution, Ray, taxpayer relief. Uh, the first part uh, requested by uh, Council Member uh, Moss, and uh, would you like to talk about uh, your, your, uh, wanting to yeah, discuss would. this Thank item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the opportunity. <clears throat> I started this conversation back in November looking for uh, tax relief with the help of my peers on the board and as well as the Commissioner of Revenue. I came up with a, <clears throat> an approach that I thought would get the conversation started, and it did. That was 1A, and then we showed up the different options, and we had them researched and looked at uh, how they would affect people differently. And I think it was the consensus of the board that this body, that 1B, was the better approach, and, and I concur with that. And so I had 
expressed to my peers in a previous correspondence that I was requesting withdrawal of the initial proposal that started the conversation uh, to come to the conclusion that all of us could agree, which I think is a good thing. And I appreciate the support for getting the reduction and also the Commissioner of Revenue for finding the agility in his accounting system to make that happen. And it amounts to uh, $38 million and a bill you don't receive. Uh, you don't get a, not going to get a check, but it's a less of a bill to compensate for the inflationary one-time conditions on used cars. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so uh, we got a clarification. Can we group? Um, Dairy Queen a bundle one and two, yeah. and uh, A one, and B one and two. Can we? I was going to do that. We have we had speakers. We had speakers in this item. Did we got speakers? Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah I was going to make a combined motion to withdraw and Yeah, if you can do that. Okay, but let's hear the speakers. Thank you. The first speaker is Mrs. Marsh. So I'm calling them up for A and B together. Thank right. you. Okay. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I have been reading our online reports. Mark Shea did a public engagement um, survey back in January. And um, the survey results were published. Um, it's online under the comprehensive plan. You all can read it. It's still there. I checked it tonight. And what it found after talking to several thousand citizens was that they were very interested in improving the general government services with more affordability and lower taxes. When I sat through the uh, <coughs> retreat the other day, uh, the two days, I was a little surprised. I didn't hear that much about affordability. Um, you know, that's their top priority, is affordability. And that's not a surprise, given how much we are all facing inflation and the increase in costs. So affordability is very important. It also was shown by tiles. And if you look at this, the big blue tile is public safety, so people want good public safety, but then the next one, the pink one, is affordability. And again, this was done in January. I did this survey. And I think we really need to be thinking about affordability, not just on the car personal property tax, but in all the taxes. And I was disappointed when I sat through the council meeting that there were expenditures brought up that seemed like they would only increase the cost. There were a couple people, I'm not going to name names, but who wanted an assistant for themselves at, at council. That kind of surprised me. I think we really need to be living within the $2.2 .2 billion budget, and we need to fix the flooding problems. Um, the things that are on here are improve the city council and city management. I think people are very concerned that the cost of government has gone up much faster than their own paychecks. They're not seeing the huge increases, and I keep asking for some kind of reference as to how much the costs have gone up on city government, but I can see that we went from a $1.9 billion budget uh, a couple years ago to now we're to $2.2 billion. And so we're going up by hundreds of millions every year. And it's just, it's a lot of money when people are having to decide what to spend their money on. And gas is expensive, food is expensive. Government taxes, we need tax relief. We really need tax relief. Please make a concerted effort as you go through the budget process for a taxpayer dividend and tax relief. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Barbara Mester is the next speaker. After Ms. Mester is Sarah Burloff. Good evening. Okay, which ones, Ms. Barnes? Because uh, we skipped One over. One A and B. Okay, we skipped over 13. Okay, um, under which? Ordinances? Ordinances, resolutions, 1A. 1A and B, okay. And B. All right. Yeah, it's amazing how many people, you know, are MIA and then they show up at budget and election time. Okay, um, because we've had these problems for over a year, and I'm one of the few people that's been showing up. Amend the calendar year. Um, tax levy personal property and machinery tools and taxpayer dividend to provide revenue deferred for March 1, 
2022. Um, like I said, everyone should pay the same thing. We should have a flat tax. Um, so we already have almost 10, 11 percent uh, tax on food. We shouldn't have a tax on food. And you should live within your means. You shouldn't take out debt. Um, so, Mr. Moss that ran in uh, 2011, you know, promised to look out for the taxpayers, but, you know, it hasn't been the case. Um, and even some of these speakers came to help push the uh, flood referendum, which is not going to fix anything. It might fix a few things temporarily for a few people who support y'all. Okay. Staff recommendations. Staff recommendations for taxpayer relief. It should come from y'all. Um, concur with personal property assessment methodology for vehicles in calendar year 2022 proposed by Commissioner of Revenue. And I just spoke to Mr. Kellum and I said, wish we could have their, you know, um, decals back, you know, the city logo. Uh, but we still pay the taxes with or without the, uh, the ability to have parking, you know. Okay, so it should be three minutes for each. And tax levy on personal property machines. So, as I stated earlier, no private industry should have uh, benefits um, and not pay taxes on their machinery, especially from foreign countries. Thank you. That's it, correct? Yes, ma'am. Sarah Gerloff. Good evening. So I am addressing the issue of personal property taxes. According to the law of the land, our Constitution and Virginia Constitution, all people have a right to acquire, possess, and protect property. One's home, car, body, mind are all considered to be property. It is unlawful to turn a right into a privilege by charging a fee, a tax, or require a license. This fact was proven in the court cases Murdoch versus Pennsylvania and Shuttleworth versus City of Birmingham, Alabama. We the people do not consent to our rights being turned into a privilege since it violates the law of the land. Any further discussion on your part regarding taxing a personal property is a waste of your time and will cause further consequences for you since your actions will be seen as a threat to deprive us of a right and a violation of US Code 241 and 242. We the taxpayers can clearly see that we once again have taxation without representation. That's all the speaker, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moss. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that item K1A be withdrawn <laughs> and that item K1B be approved. In both sections. Second. One and two. One yes. and two. Yes, correct. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Let's get it done. Thank you, Vice Mayor. By a vote of 11 and 0, you have allowed withdrawal of K1A, and you've approved K1B 1 and 2. Okay, uh, now Can we're. Say something really quick on this. Pardon? Would you mind if I said something really? Yeah, quick? go please. I just want to say I'm, I'm really pleased that our council vote on this unanimously and that all, everyone that owns a vehicle will get a 25% reduction on their personal property tax. It doesn't matter if it's, it's an inexpensive car, an expensive car, <laughs> big car, fat car, little car, no matter what it is, they're going to get a break on their property, on their personal property tax. And I'm really glad that the council did this unanimously. Thank yeah. you. And if I could, I just want to thank the Commissioner of Revenue who got the information and data to us in time to make it work. And of course, my good partner, we don't always agree, but Kevin Chantler, our budget director, I couldn't have accomplished it without him, and I do appreciate it, Kevin. No. Coming together. Okay, next item is number five, resolution to create a permanent Mayor. memorial. 
I'm or, sorry, we need to do number three. We had one more speaker that we needed. Oh, have one that, yeah. that was the number three. It was sorry. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. No worries. A resolution to defer the planning commission on uh, an ordinance to add to section 209.5, delete section 242.1, and amend section 901 of the city zoning ordinance rate to tattoo parlors and body pier piercing establishments as permitted in use as B2 zoning district requested by uh, Vice Mayor uh, Wilson and Council Member Bellucci. Danielle Good. Hey, good evening. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, I'm a permanent cosmetic tattoo parlor and school owner. I see a lot of girls going through my program doing permanent cosmetics slash microblading. Um, there's a lot of people out there, I would say about 80% of permanent makeup people doing this illegally because they are confined to the B2 zoned areas. Um, it, I was one of the first people in 2015 and 16 that was able to get a conditional use permit. Um, having a school, I had to do that. I also have a salon. Um, it is my recommendation that somehow, like in Norfolk, they have beauty spas and permanent makeup being an accessory use. Tattoo is the, the only, is, I don't know if it's the only profession, but you cannot use it as an accessory use, doing microblading in a beauty spa. You can't use it as a special condition for anywhere or anything. It is very restricted. And it, it is DPOR, the Department of Occupational and Professional Regulation, separates permanent cosmetics and tattoo. And that's all I have to say. There's a lot of people out there doing it illegally. And please take that in consideration to the planning department when it is you're considering that what you are. Um, it would be wonderful for these girls to be able to actually <coughs> work legally in maybe a B1, B3, B4 mixed in a beauty salon or however you, it, you do this. Yes. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ms. Wilson and then Mr. Uh, Bellucci. So thank you for coming forward tonight. Mm -hmm. And if you're available when the planning commission hears this, I hope that you'll have time to go and speak to them too. And and we're sending this to them so that we, we felt like we've been, we really didn't need to have the CUP any longer because it hasn't been an issue. So that's why, to be able to do that, that we had to send it back to the planning. So we're, and they will give us a recommendation. So if you have time, because I know everybody's working, it would be, or at least write them to let them know what you've said tonight. Absolutely. Would, Thank you so much. Help. Can I say one more thing as well? Sure. When we have to register as a tattoo parlor, we don't, in our, in our industry, we don't do body art. But what we do do is we do 3D areolas for cancer survivors. I work with children from CHKD that have lost their lips due to fire or domestic violence. So what I do is called paramedical tattooing. So I really change people's lives. The only other place for women to go at this time to get areola tattooing is in Richmond, Virginia. So what I'm trying to do, what we are trying to do is, is a school and to be lumped in with tattoo parlor and to be referred to as the lady behind me, that's not what we're doing. What we're doing is changing lives, helping cancer victims, helping burn victims, helping children. It's just not the same as tattoo parlors. That's really so I just wonderful. wanted to say that. And we want to make it less onerous. So that's that's really our purpose of voting on this tonight. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for yeah. coming forward, and thank Mr. you for what you do. Mr. Bolucci, you. did you have any? Well, I, I just, um, thank you. I don't have any questions for you today, but I, I'd just like to make some comments about the uh, ordinance itself or the resolution to send it to planning. But first, okay. I'd like to make uh, a motion to me, approve. And make sure that you give, uh, does she have your? Yes, ma'am. If you'll come over to me, I'd like to get your name. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. You come over. Yes. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve, and then upon receipt of a second, second. I'd just like to say a few things. Thank you. Well, I appreciate Vice Mayor's um, collaboration on this. The, I just want to make sure that the public, that we're transparent with the public on this. The intent of the discussion that's initiated here is to make it, as Vice Mayor Wilson pointed out, less onerous for tattoo studios and the um, microblading establishments like the ones you operate um, is easier to operate. In fact, I think that the zoning laws and the planning uh, ordinances that, that have been established in some ways stigmatize 
um, the industry for tattoo studios as well as for microblading in a way that's unfair and that's not contemporary with um, current social norms and expectations. I think it's unfair and it's expensive that small business owners have to go through this process. But one thing that we learned from the comments that you shared today and from comments that I've received from feedback from other industry leaders is that we do have to have a discussion about this. We don't want to make an error in trying to make things less onerous. We don't want to diminish the professional standards that exist or in any way diminish the professionalism of the industry. So we want to make sure we're upholding, I want to make sure that we're upholding all those things, but at the same time, removing barriers for small business owners um, in order to operate successfully in our city and also to bring into um, more contemporary standards what are our um, social sort of and legal expectations and um, associations with this industry. So it's a, it, the intent is positive, and, um, but I think we still am acknowledging that we have some work to do, and that's why we're sending it to planning today. Thank you very much. Okay, anybody else? Okay. So, did, there, was a, there was a motion and a second and discussion, so we're ready to vote. One second. Thank you. By vote of 11, <clears throat> 11 to 0, you have approved the resolution. Okay, moving on. A resolution to create a permanent memorial for Deshala Harris, requested by okay. Council Member Wooten. Um, let me start calling speakers. So we have several speakers. Um, this is number five. Barbara Messer is the first speaker. And the second speaker is We Are Divine. I'm not sure who that is. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is five. Okay. Create a permanent memorial. For DeShayla Harris, requested by Miss Wooten. You know, this is this is outrageous because you know the victim families and survivors have been asking for a permanent memorial um, go going on three years since the mass shooting. So to ask for a permanent memorial for one person? Do you have any idea how many victims of violent crime there are in this city? You haven't been on council that, that long. Um, and I don't know if uh, Chief Severa spoke in informal, I didn't have time to watch today, but I heard he was opposed for some reason. I don't know if he's here today because uh, But like I said, it's your duty to keep us safe, not just some neighborhoods, and to have massive police at the oceanfront for all your special events and to take over. I think it was the edge uh, for police precincts and all these cameras. Um, we need to honor these people and the new people who've been speaking out. Um, you know, they, they haven't been honored and they don't have justice. Thank you. I have to move it up for the taller people. Next speaker is We Are Divine. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't sure. And then the next speaker will be Susan Loesberg. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, I want to thank Allah for allowing me to speak here today. We Are Divine. 4204 Link Court. I, I changed my name to make a point to um, that everyone has the essence of God in them and to report slackers and weakness. I am for a memorial for Mrs. Harris. I want everybody opposed and for the memorial for Deshella to hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. I believe that each of our brothers and sisters are worth billions, if not priceless. A, a half a million or more 
for a memorial would seem more substantial. Previous victims will not be forgotten or erased. I quantify myself as an expert on slippery slopes. I've been going up and down slippery slopes since I came out mother's womb. Son of a single mother, a fatherless child, I've learned in 55 years that by going down slippery slopes, I can grow and go far. It's not, I would have, if not, I would have become complacent and stagnant. We cannot afford to be complacent in this beach. A memorial for Ms. Harris would be monumental and a step forward for progress and healing. Thanks for hearing me. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is uh, Susan Loesberg, and then Jackie Horton. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Dyer and City Council members. Um, my name is Susan Loesberg. I am a Virginia Beach resident and a volunteer for Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. At Moms Demand Action, we know that we all want to keep our families safe, and we believe common sense gun laws and a gun and a culture of gun safety go hand in hand with responsible gun ownership. Only a few years ago, many of you on city council did not recognize that gun violence was a crisis in our city, but I am so heartened to see that Mayor Dyer and others have come to acknowledge the epidemic of gun violence that we are facing in, in America and right here in Virginia Beach. The trauma of gun violence doesn't end when the shooting stops. Across the country, thousands of, of people have been impacted by this public health epidemic. In a national poll, approximately 60% have reported that they or someone they care for has experienced gun violence. Um, and that statistic does not include children. More people die from gun violence um, by early um, February in the United States than during an entire calendar year in other high-income countries. In addition, millions more in the U.S. are shot and wounded, threatened with a gun, or witness an act of gun violence in their lifetime. Every year, more than 40,000 Americans are killed in acts of gun violence, and approximately 85,000 more are shot and wounded. Experiencing gun violence has lasting emotional, physical, legal, and financial impacts on survivors, as well as their communities. Gun violence takes many forms, including gun suicides and suicide attempts, gun homicides and assault, domestic violence in, involving a gun, school and mass shootings, shootings by police, and unintentional shootings, which can especially affect children and innocent bystanders. Deshayla Harris was an innocent bystander. She was a vibrant young woman with a bright future ahead of her. Like so many victims of gun violence, she was not carrying a gun. She was not involved in the fray. She was at the wrong place at the wrong time. I did not know DeShayla Harris, nor do I know her family. But my heart goes out to her family and her friends for the excruciating pain I imagine they must have gone through the night DeShayla was killed and are continuing to experience and will continue to experience for a very long time. I am here to support a permanent memorial for DeShayla Harris. She stands as a symbol of the tragedy of gun violence and the trauma it leaves in its wake, not just for the family and for the friends, but for the entire community. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next speaker is Jackie Horton. After Ms. Horton, it'll be Jay Boone. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Thank y'all. So hello, it's been a while. Um, again, my name is Jackie Horton. Some of you may know me as Angie Day. I'm the founder of the Underground 1865, an organization dedicated to organizing, advocacy, community, and mutual aid. I'm currently organizing with the Harris and Lynch families. On March 26, 2021, we know that a fun night out turned tragic for two beautiful lives, both DeShayla Harris and Donovan Lynch. DeShayla Harris was a beautiful young woman who cared about others. She had a long and bright future ahead of her. A night of fun in this city cost her her life. She was an innocent bystander, and this should have never happened to DeShayla Harris. A year later, and there have still been no answers as to what happened to DeShayla. With all of these expensive cameras up, I just don't understand how there is still no footage. 
since you use taxpayer dollars to buy the cameras and everything else, at least use it to do something that we want to see within this community. As a community, we have chosen to honor her with a makeshift memorial. People of all backgrounds have chosen to pay homage to such a special young woman. And quite frankly, you all should feel ashamed that the Shayla's family and loved ones should even have to come up here to speak to you about why this memorial should exist. <coughs> You all should be ashamed that Council Member Wooten has to come and advocate for this to even happen, but we genuinely appreciate her love and compassion. Thank you. However, the mayor and the entire city should be reaching out and asking what they can do for the Harris family. The city of Virginia Beach and the Virginia Beach Police Department failed to protect the Shayla and so many others that night by failing to properly respond to the incidents that occurred that evening. The Shayla's blood is on your hands, and it is up to you to do, do right by Ms. Harris and her entire family. This memorial is just a small token from the city to honor DeShayla and her legacy. Justice for DeShayla Harris. We will never stop saying her name. Thank you. Jay Boone. After Ms. Boone will be Jafari Jones. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I cannot begin to put myself in Ms. Harris's shoes and trying to process the killing of my child and having no answers. The community knows that, the, that this council cannot bring back to Shayla, but there are things that you can do. The healing of this family and the city starts at the head. Collectively, we are trying to have faith in this council and forgive the things not done. To truly move forward, we need to now work on actions that will help to push the healing and investigation forward. When the homicides occurred 355 days ago, this council said that finding out what happened was top priority because it was important to you. Important meaning of great significance or value. DeShayla was important and valuable and an innocent bystander of all that happened that night. If it was not safe for her, then why will it be safe for the next person? You have to set the precedent that is important to solve and the monument can do that. Also, a monument will show the city knows the problem and is truly actively and actively working to get a handle of it because they are, they are not shying away from it, not pushing it under the rug, but sitting in it while they work to fix the problem. Too often are hopes and prayers given, but the action can be waning. CUSP, um, my organization that I'm the president of, recently attended the CAC meeting, and of the 15 homicides in the city last year, there were two unsolved. DeShayla is one of them. Many will say it is because the community does not know, but if the city themselves has went back to business as usual, then how, this, how will the citizens know that it is, keyword, important? Last year, the weekend of the shooting was the hottest we had had in a while. Adding to that, people were finally able to get out of the house and patronize the oceanfront. We have been having some of those same influxes in, in the weather, and as the mandates roll back, there will be many more making their way to the oceanfront, just like DeShayla did. We cannot have business as usual. There tends to be care up front, but because the oceanfront is a major money maker for the city, making it open and thriving becomes top priority. As a frame of mind on a regular, on a regular might not be the worst, but the fact that an extremely publicized double homicide occurred, there, sh um, there shifts uh, it towards being insensitive to keep opening it back up without any um, resolve. Add to that the way the families have notified, um, was notified and that they have been treated during the investigation, then it only adds to the feeling that we all have different definitions of important. I hope that this council is persuaded to honor the Harris family and Council Member Wooten's request for the monument and partner with them. Let DeShayla be the face of change to the oceanfront. Let the monument be the beacon that the city's priority is safety for all. Let the family and the community not only hear that you want to be different, I mean, be, be better, but see the results of it and feel that Virginia Beach is truly Thank a place for all. Appreciate Thank you for your time and justice for DeShayla Harris. Jafar. The next speaker is Jafari Jones. After Mr. Jones is Earl, Earl Lewis. Hey, good evening. Good evening, Council. Long time no see. Good to see all y'all's... Uh, 2022 faces. Um, the Shayla Harris's memorial, uh, my name is Jafari Jones. I'm the president of BLM 757, also known as Black Lives Matter 757. I'm familiar with a lot of your faces. Um, we have been advocating for the Shayla Harris's family since day one when everything happened. 
Um, we all hurt together, and what happened on March 26, 2021 at the Virginia Beach Oceanfront was the entire 757's nightmare. And DeShayla Harris was taken away from us in an act of violence almost a year ago today. We feel as if law enforcement should be investigated in this matter because an officer involved shooting happened about 100 yards away and one bullet has not been recovered and accounted for. No mother, father, sister, brother, friend, or associate should have to go and say goodbye to their loved one and, it's not in, and not be able to properly grieve and celebrate their life of their loved one. I personally witnessed the pain uh, it has caused this family. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting and briefly working with DeShayla Harris. Um, my son's mother actually was DeShayla's last tech and she still grieves her loss to this day. Um, I had to face the judge for peacefully protesting to raise awareness for this cause. Um, we all messed up together, including myself. I would like to apologize for any inconvenience or malice words I may have spewed by these very emotional events that I have a very passionate about. And sometimes my passion gets the best of me. I apologize if my reputation perceives me. Let's all heal together. Please fund this healing space for DeShayla Harris. And if that means that this is the seed to memorializing everyone who lost their loved one in an untimely and unfortunate manner in the city of Virginia Beach, then so be it. DeShayla Harris, say her name. The next speaker is Earl Lewis. After Mr. Lewis is Gary McCollum. Good evening, Earl. Good to see you. Hey, sir, how you doing? Good, glad to be here. Mayor, Vice Mayor, to Councilman. My name is Earl Lewis, Jr. I'm actually the cousin of William Chapman, who based the unfortunate loss of life through gun violence in the city of Portsmouth. And what I realized from that, right, I've been an um, advocate at fighting gun violence, gun violence. The night that this actually happened, I was actually on my way down to the beach. But for some strange reason, I didn't make it all the way. But when I heard about it, it touched my heart to seek out Mr. Shayla's family. And being a gun survivor of a family who went through it, when the mother goes to the grave site, because she can't do nothing else but look at the grave site, because her daughter is not there. And I've been totally involved with this family as well. But what I want to say to you is this. As a veteran of the United States Army of over 13 years, as a firefighter who was out on Oceana, as a firefighter retired, EMT, it touched my heart so much I had to say something tonight. When I woke up this morning, I seen the Shayla on the TV. She was wearing black and white. And what that tells me that, you know, no shame to it, that she spoke to me to come and say something. Because if I would have came out there that night and saw the shader land on the ground as somebody who understand what it's like to lose a loved one, it would have broke my heart. And when I see Miss Harris being broken over and over, it still touched my heart. Because as a firefighter, EMT, I'm going to show up. And showing up in Virginia Beach right from Oceana would have been a long drive. To get there to see this young lady land on the ground. But not only that, I did my own research. My research was this. And the Shayla was with two other young ladies. One young lady ran, ran to the, uh, down the sidewalk. The other young lady went in the bush. The bushes were about this high, about the height of the, the Shayla. They was too thick. More than likely, she couldn't get through them bushes. It wasn't nowhere she couldn't go. And you imagine your child getting shot in the neck. And that's what I imagine from an EMT side of this, right, and falling in the bush, and then not only that, it's a good possibility that she might have actually recorded her own death. Normally, I stay in the back of the bus, and I won't say too much, but this right here I had to speak on. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart, please, please, give this family some relief, please. And I mean it from a professional. I served my country, I served as a firefighter over the Oceana, EMT, and I truly have investigated this with all I got in me, with all I got. And I'm telling you, this young lady came to Virginia Beach to love. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it, though. The next speaker is Gary McCollum. And after Mr. McCollum is um, Alicia 
Alicia Harris. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, uh, Ms. Harris and her, I think her family who's here, I think they're going to stand or either come up. And I'll be very brief. You guys know I've had my issues on several uh, things here in the city, but on, on this one, uh, I want to compliment you tonight um, for bringing, uh, Councilman Wooten, for bringing this resolution forward. Um, Councilman Bellucci, the meetings that you've had with the Harris family, uh, city manager, the meetings you've had, and we, uh, some of you may know, we had a very good meeting with the chief of police uh, last week. And there's been a lot said tonight about what happened, what didn't happen. There was a lot of things that happened that night. But I think what you're going to hear from the family is that this young lady, DeShayla, was special. And our city is special. This is a great city. We're trying to make it great for everybody, and you know that, Mr. Mayor. But at the same time, I think what we're trying to do is to put a permanent memorial in place because she wasn't just anybody. You know she had a social media following. There are people. She had fans. That's who this young lady was. And so I, I just, I really want to uh, compliment you on bringing this resolution forward. Councilman Wooten, again, compliment uh, uh, the city manager and the police chief on what they're doing. I hope everybody who's listening to this uh, know that the police are doing everything that they can. And I'm convinced from that meeting that we had with the police chief that they know who did this. But I think we need the public engaged in this to finally get the person who actually murdered DeShayla. And so I was very uh, pleased with what the chief said about working with the family getting some public service announcements out there to get the public to speak up because people in this community, they know who did this. The last thing I'll say is that this memorial is not about celebrating her death, but this memorial is about celebrating the life and legacy of a special young lady, DeShayla Harris. And that's what this is about. And so I, I just, again, applaud you, and I know the family wants to speak uh, at this time. Good afternoon. Welcome. Hi, how y'all doing today? I am Miss Elisha Harris, and I am DeShayla's mother, and thank you for having me back. Um, I do want to say that I listened to Barbara, and I do want to say that I am with moralizing everyone that's been hurt down in Virginia Beach. But DeShayla, she's my special one, and she was an innocent bystander, and she wasn't bothering anybody, just like the other victims. But this is the beginning of something that can be more than just D. Shayla, more than just the victims. We can, we can um, recognize everybody. Because again, like I said, I know that Virginia Beach is trying to help us. And we're trying to help as well. We need everybody's attention. We need everybody's help right now. It's not a us against them and them against us. It's us together. D. Shayla was wonderful. She wanted to feed the community. She wanted to have young things for the young women, the young girls that was underneath her. And I'm going to live out her legacy and help her do that, even though she's not here. But she was just a beautiful butterfly. And all I ask y'all is just to help me, and just to help me recognize that her memorial will never be forgotten. That's all. And I thank you for paying attention. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Latonya Snow. Good evening. Hi. This is different for me. So I'm Latanya Snow. Um, my name is Auntie Advocate, and I'm speaking on behalf of DeShayla Harris. My nephew was Xavier Hill. He was killed, excuse me. My nephew was killed January of last year. So meeting the Harris family is like super, um, it's not part of my speech, but meeting them is super personal for me. I want to talk about her. I want to talk about how disheartening it is to live in Virginia and to be in Virginia Beach where her mom has to come and speak amongst a council of people and ask for a memorial for her daughter. Her mom will never get her daughter back again. Her sisters will never see her again. And we can't imagine the pain that her mom feels. The least the city of Virginia Beach could do is to give her a memorial 
please excuse my tears, y'all. This city isn't perfect. No one isn't perfect. We aren't perfect. But the least we can do in our city is provide a memorial, provide a permanent memorial for the Shayla. We are asking that you please fulfill the need for a permanent memorial in honor of the Shayla Harris. Please be with us. Please don't be against us. The Shayla was important. Her life mattered. She loved her life. She loved her family. She loved her mom. She loved her sisters. And we shouldn't take her life for granted. Please support her mother, please support her sisters, and please support her legacy. This is the least, as I said again, the city of Virginia Beach can do for the Shayla. Please, I'm here to support her, and I'm asking for you to support her as well. Justice for the Shayla. Thanks, guys, for your time. Thank you. Mayor, that's all the speakers. Okay, is there a motion? Yes, I, I can make a motion. Do, would you like me to make a motion before I make comments or? Make the motion and get this second. All right, I, I will m make the motion and, and move to approve the resolution. Do we have a second? second? Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. So I, I just wanted to make some comments um, really briefly um, how this um, request came about. Uh, it, it is an un, unusual quest, it's request. It's, it's not normal. Um, however, in, in meeting and, and speaking with Ms. Harris, you know, and her family, uh, she made one request. You know, there is an existing temporary uh, memorial on 19th and Atlantic. And as a mother, she said, could we do something to make this permanent to, to show uh, what's happened here? Because some people visit that temporary site and they really don't know what happened. And so uh, this resolution uh, creates an opportunity uh, to prepare or provide a plaque. And why a plaque? Well, it, it's something that's um, very, it's something that's small, uh, but it's tangible. Uh, and I know in, uh, in the past, uh, when I've come before council and, and asked about ways to honor uh, individuals, a plaque was suggested. And so that's the reason for the plaque. Uh, in terms of, you know, the amount, uh, in terms of, you know, the funding, it, it, the funding is certainly uh, important because it has, uh, there has to uh, be a process, there are materials, and in talking with and researching this, the amount can be less than 10000 it may not rise to $10,000, but the amount that's being requested um, after researching it, it has to be at least that amount, or it's a possibility that uh, that particular plaque may not be um, available or may not be uh, able to be completed. Uh, I like what uh, the community has said, and thank you for coming out. Uh, one thing that s stays on my mind and stuck out from the conversations uh, and the comments was doing something together. Uh, and, and really and truly, that's what it's about, uh, doing something together um, to uh, focus on the victim, to provide that journey of healing. Uh, it's, it's a separate incident. I don't want to compare 531 with this incident. Uh, although uh, DeShayla was a part of a mass shooting that happened on uh, March 26, uh, she lost her life tragically. Uh, so did Donovan Lynch. And there were several individuals who were um, injured. And so um, because of their request, and if anyone uh, asked for such a request, I would consider their request the same across the board. Uh, and so I, I would ask that um, as we 
uh, consider this resolution, we think about um, the impact that it will have on our community and the message that it will send to the family um, and the future as we move forward uh, in the city of Virginia Beach. Anybody else? If I can make a comment, you know, having been a mayor and a council that has gone through tragedy, there is no playbook for this at all. There is no written rules. There is grieving. There is grief. And we as a community share it. And it's tough to say, you know, it's tough for me to say that perhaps this is not the most practical idea for us to do at this time. But once again, I think, you know, as a city, when we make a decision like this, we set a precedent. Is there a better way? And, you know, once again, with the city, you know, being involved, you know, once again, it, it, you know, the, diff, it, the decision process is emotional and difficult. And my suggestion is perhaps that we pursue establishing a foundation like we have the veterans that have a memorial and that we make a memorial that is truly symbolic and sincere, but do it whether as a, uh, a city or as a region, youth crime, violence, homicide, and it is homicide, does not know any border. And how do we stop this? And you know, we've had police officers killed. We had some police officers that were undercover that were, you know, tragically taken. Youth violence, and I think I heard it often, is an epidemic. So my point is that, you know, I just don't want to, you know, say I can't support this now. But I can support moving forward. You know, like the Veterans Committee. They have a memorial and they do things. And to, you know, pick a site and then also, um, you, you know, that, you know, where everybody can come and look and as a community going forward. As you all know, you know, I, I'm really taken back by this. You know, this is, uh, you know, like I said, uh, you know, having gone through a lot since I personally became mayor, but as a council, as we came together, as a community, the outreach that was there. We have right now established a 531 committee. They're external, they're gonna make recommendations and do things. The thing is, can we do something better that will not only, yeah, but would recognize the grief of the family, but also the grief of the many families, you know, that are out there. And, you know, in speaking of, in, you know, a couple weeks ago, you know, I did get in touch with the mayors in the 756. And we're going to be organizing a what we call the Shayla Harris 757 Youth Violence Task Force. It's going to be named for her. Vice Mayor Wilson is going to, you know, help out in the city just to work specifically on youth violence and use all resources coming forward. But once again, as we go forward as a city, as we go forward as Hampton Roads, as we go forward as a nation, you know, let's show how a community can come together and, you know, perhaps find a better way. <coughs> so, anybody else? Vote is open. By a vote of two to nine, the motion has failed. Okay, and now, uh, once again, along the same line, uh, Ms. Wooten, you have a motion on the other one? We have speakers. Yes, we have speakers. We have speakers. Oh, speakers, speakers first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. 
Uh, for number six, uh, the first speaker is Jerome Bell. After Mr. Bell is Barbara Messner. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor. How are you? Good Doing evening, good. Vice Welcome. Mayor and City Council members. Excuse me for not being in a suit today. I've been in a suit all week because you all know I'm running for Congress and I want to be comfortable tonight. So, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, you actually took the words right out of my mouth, um, basically what I was going to suggest on Ms. Wooten's bill about the gun violence memorial. Uh, it needs to be a, a memorial for all violence. Um, unfortunately, there is an epidemic of violence in our city, but it's not just guns. Um, I have friends that um, have had their daughters raped and murdered without guns. I've had people murdered by knives, and I have people bludgeoned, um, unfortunately, in the head 17 times. So we can't put a, a, a I guess, a, a price or a condition on what violence is, is more horrible. Okay, so, you know, I think that um, that, that your memorial ideal is, is very, very good if we just remove the gun part and make it a violence memorial for all members, for all people in this city and put it, you know, in like a, a park or wherever. So like, like the Harris family can come and they can go to, to their memorial for their daughter and another family can see their memorial for their children as well. So that's what I would suggest, um, that we have a memorial for all violence of the city of Virginia Beach and not just gun violence. Thank and you very I much. I think if we have a common memorial and people go there and you know to grieve and remember and celebrate the life of the victim, they actually may find people there that they can build, build bridges with that can help them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it actually does a disservice to the Harris family to just put a memorial on a corner. Uh, where her makeshift memorial is, I think that gives uh, that does her and her family a disservice. Give them a permanent place where they can go and grieve their loved ones. And I thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker is Barbara Mesner, and then it'll be Sarah Gerloff. Been holding the sign up the wrong way. Talking about memorials. You know, all the money doesn't go to the memorials. You know, some people, you know, take contributions, you know, and promote it. So, um, and I agree with uh, Mr. Bell. That was part of what I was going to say is, uh, You know, uh, Will Sessons was on the Mayor's Committee Against Gun Violence. It's your duty not to have a task force, Mr. Dyer, Mayor Dyer, with other cities. You're responsible for Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach. Okay. Um, and, you know, the four nurses that went off the sandcastle, that was a direct result of the city's negligence and not having wheel guards in the parking garage and reinforced steel. Uh, there's been so many preventable deaths because Virginia Beach is a party city and alcohol city first at all cost. And there's a memorial at the fancy north end on 47th Street for everyone that's died of breast cancer. That's the w walkway to the beach, public. Um, and this is no reflection on LaShayla Harris. But I think it's outrageous that you want to roll all victims into one and bypass the fact that the victim families have been waiting three and a half years and you have paid somebody else a memorial committee and you bring this up before dealing with that. They don't want to be rolled in with somebody else's tragedy, preventable tragedy. And that small plaque for Ryan Keith Cox. Okay. Um, and there's new people that have been speaking out. Um, 
who talked about their heroism after um, May 31st. And I want to remind people that there was a mock mass shooting drill Sentara held on the ocean front with something in the water. I think uh, that's not my three minutes. Okay, but Ryan Keith Cox, Joshua Hardy, um, Lakita Brown, Mary Louise Gale, Herbert Snelling, uh, Catherine Nixon. You talk about families. Jason has three children. The youngest one was a six-month-old baby. Um, Tara Welch Gallagher. Um, Alexander Mikhail Gusev. Uh, Michelle Missy Langer. She was one of the first ones shot. So... Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, don't, don't kick the can down the road and uh, mix their money with other cities. You're responsible for this city. Thank you. Tara Gerloff. And then the next speaker will be Pat Godzinski. Hello again. Ms. Wooten has suggested a memorial creating, created for victims of gun violence. Ms. Wooten, why do you believe a memorial will benefit victims of gun violence? It seems insensitive to me, like a consolation prize. How does a memorial help solve the problem? Guns do not kill people, people kill people. Why are so many more people being killed in our city compared to 30 years ago? I grew up in Virginia Beach. It is not the same it used to be. It has become more of a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. A dismal and abysmal swamp compared to the Virginia Beach of my childhood. I do not even want to live here anymore. It has become exponentially horrific recently under your watch. And that is why I am speaking out. I am awake, as are many. Our patients have run out with your unlawful behavior. This is a government by consent of the governed, and we did not consent to what you have been doing. Welcome to the Great Awakening, the Unveiling Revelations. The end of the world as we know it is in motion and cannot be stopped. The next speaker is Pat Gadzinski. And then Susan Loesberg. Lose Thank you, Mayor. Um, I am a resident of Virginia Beach. I'm a voter and a volunteer. And today I'm here as a volunteer with Mums Demand Action for Gun Sense in America to ask that you support Councilwoman Wooten's resolution to create a memorial for victims of gun violence in Virginia Beach. The heartbreak of being the surviving family, friend, and in the community of loved ones killed in acts of gun violence is part of our shared experience in these chambers. First, I would like to thank Councilpersons Wooten and Berlucci for their resolution to include a surviving member on the 531 Memorial Committee, where their personal experience and advocacy of and for the many survivors of the shooting will be invaluable in representing those who were left behind. Nothing can take away the pain or the effects of violence, but a physical memorial to those who are victims of gun violence may help to alleviate the terrible anguish of so many in our city who are affected. The indelible mark on the lives of those who have been personally impacted is felt by too many in Virginia, in Virginia Beach. We are not alone, and more than 60% of adults in the U.S. are affected by daily acts of gun violence. 110 die, and more than 250 are injured every day. It is the number one killer of teens and children in our country. And our reality is that two-thirds of gun deaths are suicides, that gun homicide disproportionately impacts communities of color, women, and children, and that in the U.S., many gun homicides, especially those committed against black and Latinx people, go unsolved. On behalf of our members of Moms Demand Action and our many allies who work with us to help end gun violence, I ask that you choose to support the survivors and families who have lost so much by committing to, the, to a physical memorial to the many victims and survivors of gun violence so that we may all remember them. Please pass the resolution to dedicate and fund a memorial to gun violence victims in our city. Please allow the family of DeShayla Harris to recognize her with a plaque. And each of these memorials is an acknowledgement and sign of respect for the value of the lives we have lost. Thank you again, Councilwoman Wooten. Thank you. I respect and appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. Thank you. 
The next speaker is Susan Lewisberg. <clears throat> and then Dr. William Duke. Hello again. Um, I just want to say what happened here in Virginia Beach on May 31st, 2019 was and still um, is a, was devastating for the victims, the surviving families and friends, and for our entire Virginia Beach community. Almost everyone I know was somehow or another connected to someone in Building 2 that day. Um, um, we also suffered an additional tragic shooting on March 26th, 2021 also devastating for the victims, their surviving families and friends, and for our entire Virginia Beach community. Mass shootings are not the only incidents of high mortality and injury from gunfire. We cannot overlook the daily gun violence that does not always get the same public outcry. And I mentioned it earlier, gun suicides, gun homicides, domestic violence involving a gun, um, unintentional shootings, which is killing our children, the, the kids getting access to unsecured firearms, um, and innocent bystanders. The victims um, are getting younger, and the shooters are getting younger. And I know Mayor Dyer knows this. You've been working with other mayors, and, and you know this. Community trauma is not only the sum of the hurt and suffering of individuals. We have traumatizing experiences but also the collective trauma experienced in communities with increased incidence of violence. Make no mistake, there is a post-traumatic a post stress tied to community gun violence, and we are not addressing it as a city or as a community. Let's start with acknowledging we have a gun violence problem. Let's support our police as they address it. Let's look for and address the roots of gun violence so we can end this epidemic. And let's help our community heal by creating a memorial to those who have been victims of gun violence. We are talking tonight about a memorial to gun violence, victims of gun violence, not knife violence, not rock violence. We're talking about gun violence, and I know everyone here knows, knows that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Wooten, for your tireless effort to address the gun violent crisis that we have in our city. Um, gun violence affects our entire community. Thank you so much for what you do. Uh, I ask uh, council members here to please support the resolution to create a memorial for victims of gun violence. Thank you very much. Good night. The next speaker is Dr. William Duke. After Dr. Duke is Andrew Jackson. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of city council. Thank you for listening to me. My name is Dr. William Duke and I currently serve as the Vice Chairman of the Tidewater Libertarian Party. Uh, I'm here this evening to deliver our response to this proposal uh, uh, on behalf of the entire party. Uh, at first glance, it seems like something that would be very easy to support, but I have to say that uh, a few moments of consideration gave us pause to reflect. Now, uh, as others have said, why is this memorial, memorial being dedicated to victims of gun violence only? Are victims of knife violence somehow unworthy of such a memorial? What about those who are beaten up with fists and feet and persons horrifically beaten to death with blunt instruments? Uh, we believe there's um, another point to this memorial that uh, is proposed to victims of gun violence only. We suggest, or we fear, I should say, that guns are the true target, that it's not a problem with the uh, criminals or their savage victims, but rather what we fear is that this proposed memorial is designed to foster an opposition to the Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America. And what is really hoped for here is to target and diminish the right of the citizens of Virginia Beach to keep and bear arms in their own personal and lawful defense. We've all seen what happens when a poorly armed nation is invaded by a superior aggressor. The world is now watching the pillage of the Ukraine by Russia. The United States of America must never be placed in a condition of such pathetic weakness. Any proposal that may weaken the Second Amendment of our Constitution must be thwarted. Now, I'm a libertarian, all right? We libertarians sign a pledge to uh, 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 never be the uh, instigators of violence, that is, not to use 
force against our fellow citizens um, um, initially, right? So uh, I would say that most libertarians would love uh, to uh, uh, see an end to violence. Who wouldn't, all right? But all forms of violence, drunk drivers, everybody. So uh, from the beginning, Jerome Bell was up here talking about exactly this. If you want to make a memorial, make a memorial to all victims of any form of violence. But don't single out guns because that's got the hidden agenda behind it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Bye-bye. The next speaker is Andrew Jackson. And after Mr. Jackson, we have a few that are WebEx speakers. Okay. Oh. Andrew, good evening. Good evening. Mayor, Council, uh, not knowing what conversation would come here, not knowing that. And I waited. I didn't leave, I waited. And I knew the conversation that just happened was coming here. But what we have here is, I, I won't deal with that. What I will deal with is just an English lesson. I read the proposal. And I looked at English comprehension. You know, that thing that happens with kids from the third to the fifth, sixth grade. And I said, well, what is the subject here? It wasn't guns. The subject was victims. Victims. It didn't say how. There's this, and I looked up a couple things in here, and I, I see I highlighted. I said, well, maybe something I don't understand about English. There's nothing I don't understand about English, but some others more unless they just want an excuse to talk about Second Amendment in the middle of people being hurt, carrying a, a, a heavy load on their heart. Here we come with Second Amendment again. I, I don't get it. What is this hang up with guns that you can't even take a, 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 a plain sentence and find the right subject in it? Victim. Just victim. We're really talking about victim. I understand victim. I understand that re really, really, really well. I buried a son. I understand that. I had nothing to do. I, what happened to him? He got killed. I wouldn't care if it was the ceiling fell in. He's still, he's gone. Victims are victims. Doesn't make any difference. How? That doesn't do anything up here for the families or in here. The subject is victims. That's what the proposal was, to do something for victims. All I can say is, is Virginia Beach school system failing? That we can't take grown-ups now that can identify the subject of a proposal without worrying about whether somebody's trying to take your gun? My God. Maybe that's the issue. We too hung up on guns. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. The next two speakers are by WebEx. Um, Philip Van Cleve is the first. Mr. Van Cleve, if you will pause two to, three, two to three seconds before beginning, you are unmuted and may begin. Uh, yeah, Mr. Van Cleve, if you'll pause for a second, um, we're having problems with the audio in the room.
Can you hear him? Mr. Van Cleve, if you could begin. Well, let's go to the next one and then we'll come back. Vic Nichols, if you'll pause two to three seconds before beginning, you are unmuted. with the city's business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Due to technical difficulties. Uh, Ms. Mesner, you're out of order. No, you're out of order, Ms. <laughs> Hopefully the new building will be better. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thinking the new building Mr. Um, advocates. Mr. Van Cleve, if you'll pause two to three seconds, we'll try again. Thank you. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Oh, before I start, I want to make sure you're hearing me. If you can you hear me? Can you hear me? If you'll go ahead and do, and begin, we can hear you. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming then you didn't hear anything I said earlier. Um, yes, I, I uh, my name is Philip Van Cleve. I'm the president of the Virginia Citizens Defense League. Um, uh, um, and I appreciate um, Ms. Wooten's uh, uh, consideration. Um, we our members are, are all gun owners and we're all tired of the attack on our gun rights and everything. Uh, when it comes to crime, all of the focus is always on guns. And um, so I, I think our members have made it pretty clear that we're okay. we don't want violence at all, any type. It's not good that an innocent person is hurt in any way, shape or form. That's totally unacceptable. But just picking one item is wrong and, and Ms. Wooten, um, had uh, has um, has opened her mind and looked at this and decided to offer a broader, more encompassing uh, resolution. And we uh, we uh, we think that's a great idea if you're going to do it. Now that moves our position from oppose of this to neutral. Uh, we don't really take a position on on things that uh, are not directly dealing with firearms, especially in a negative light. Um, so whether you feel that such a thing would be appropriate, we, we take no position on that other than we, uh, we like her um, substitute uh, version of this. And that's it. Thank you. The next speaker and last speaker is via WebEx, Vic Nichols. If you'll pause two to three seconds before beginning, you are unmuted and may begin. When I was young, a mom with two young daughters was abducted, raped, and beaten with a hammer. She was killed. What do you want me to tell those daughters that her mother isn't worth remembering about the grandchildren that will never know her? Do you know, under, now understand why it's not just about guns? It's about violence because it can be any type that can kill someone. Council Member Wooten, I know at least through 2020, you had indicated an anti-Second Amendment bias 
Um, Martin Luther King was able to do his nonviolence because of those who are actually armed. And if you take a look at Charles Cobb's book, he goes through what they had to do in that case. And it was armed people to make sure that they could actually do unarmed stuff. And the fact is Martin Luther King lost his life. He was denied concealed carry, which is basically a second amendment right. The ability to have a firearm and use it appropriately to protect oneself that's what we fight for okay and um let me add let me add another thing to that hb 1175 was voted down and it was to go after criminal acts of gun violence so you know if you're not going to go after the criminals why are you going after regular people make this about violence make this so that i don't have to look at grandchildren who sit there and think oh nobody cares about our our uh, grandmother no one no one cared about her simply because she wasn't shot i don't think that's really what we want to telegraph to people is it thank you and that's all the speakers okay thank you uh we have a motion so uh, i i've passed out a substitute motion uh or a substitute version of the resolution uh, that has previously been uh, listed and discussed. I'd like to enter that um, that particular resolution, the substitute. Okay, Mark, does that have to be read into the record? Doesn't have to be. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. It's been passed out to the council. Okay. All right. Uh, is there a second? And so, bef before I, I'd okay. like to, to make comments. If I could, sure. um, this uh, this substitute version uh, of the resolution, uh, the the initial resolution was a gun violence memorial, and I just wanted to make sure. Uh, a lot of times, the uh, conversation and um, the discussion can be taken off track. And I want to make sure we get it back on track. This is about victims. It's about the victim, um, DeShayla Harris. But in my pursuit to provide a memorial, a permanent memorial for De DeShayla Harris, there was some concern, um, as was mentioned, that you should broaden it uh, to honor all victims of gun violence, hence the memorial for gun violence. There was no intention to uh, take a stance against the right to bear arms. That's not a part of this legislation. Uh, that's not my position in general. I've never taken a position against the right to bear arms or carrying a weapon. That's not the intent of the resolution. However, listening and considering the thoughts of residents of Virginia Beach who thought <coughs> that that was the intention. I came up with the substitute um, and it's a resolution to create a gone too soon memorial. That memorial and this resolution is expansive and encompasses innocent people who's, who lost their lives. That could be through gun violence uh, it could be through other manners uh, where they <coughs> lost their life uh, too soon, hence the name of the resolution. And so in the resolution, uh, there's an option for us to first consider starting uh, the memorial online and placing names of innocent victims online. And then perhaps moving forward, with the option of planting trees throughout our city to remember victims who lost their life too soon. This is what some of my colleagues on the council asked for, so I submitted it. Now, it's if that's what they want to do, certainly can support it, but my interest is for the victim. It's not against 
individuals who have the right to bear arms. That is your right. I'm not here to take that from you. This is again about the victims. So if we want to have a more expansive and, and inclusive memorial, this is that option. And might I note, uh, it was always the intent to be inclusive of all victims, not just one, not just some. When we hurt, we all hurt. There is no exclusion. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? There being no second, the uh, uh, item is denied. Okay, we're going to go on to planning items. And planning L1, uh, 1252 Jensen LLC for conditional use permit, Ray Bulk Storage, and modification of proffers at 1252 Jensen Drive and a portion of 1228 uh, Jensen Drive, District 6, formerly District 6 Beach. Um, so the, we do not have the applicant signed up. The, the first speaker that we have um, signed up is Barbara Messner. That may be the applicant right there. That's Good evening. Okay. <clears throat> Planning L1, Jensen LLC for conditional use permit, bulk storage yard, uh, Jensen Drive, portion. Um, could I ask Mr. Tahan where the, if I could see the map for the item? The mayor needs to tell you that. I mean, the mayor needs to yeah, tell you. Yeah, miss, no. Miss okay. Yeah. It, normally, it's it's up okay. there on planning. Did you know that? Were you aware that normally okay. when there's an the item, there. there's a map? There's a protocol you go through me. That's the way it is. Yeah, and and it's not due process. You don't even sign your name properly. So, like I said, I just wanted to be sure. I'm pretty sure that Jensen Drive is in the uh, bird neck area, but I, I can't be sure without, there's the map. Okay, thanks, it's, it's kind of tiny, you can't see it. Uh, the convention center was right here, it was great. We used to have reasonable access. Either way, I'm opposed to bulk storage sitting out. It's unsightly, there's a problem with uh, theft, and conditional use permit um, modification. We shouldn't be modifying it, and this is uh, Mr. Guy King Towers, who has yet to answer an email. So I'm I'm in opposition because I think there's uh, too much bulk storage. Even uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, all these people, they get to have storage out in the parking lot. That's not appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Um. The next speaker is via WebEx, Tammy Mullins-Rice. Ms. Mullins-Rice, if you'll pause two to three seconds before beginning, you are unmuted. Okay, thank you very much. Um, my uh, name is Tammy Mullins-Rice, and I'm the um, president of the SeaTac Community Civic League. Um, I am not opposed to this conditional use. I just wanted to come on record or on, uh, for... Um, in, in reference of CTAC, I heard CTAC being mentioned several times tonight. Um, so we met with Scott Prudy of Solid Structures, and I just want to clarify uh, this conditional use uh, for Buck's bulk storage on Jensen Drive is at the back of the property. And one of our concerns when we met with Scott was that this property actually has um, an entrance off of Birdneck Road uh, between St. Stephen's um, Church of God in Christ and uh, Pastor Ford's home. And we wanted to make sure that the 
commercial equipment being used for this um, um, solid structure for his company would not be entering off of Birdneck Road. The initial um, plan that we saw for planning, that was the intent. Um, after meeting with us, he had said that the entrance for the um, commercial use, the bulk storage use, will all enter and exit off of Jensen Drive. So it won't be where we would see it in the front. Um, in addition, um, our concerns were in regards to flooding for the neighbors who live on Beautiful Street and making sure that um, as um, they develop the area that there's proper runoff for the water so that these neighbors aren't having water, standing water in their yards. Um, there was also um, the um, promise of use of the uh, front parking lot um, that would be part of the commercial business uh, for use of the Ch of St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ on Sundays. But as we know, people say a lot of things when it's not in writing. So we wanted to make sure it was on the record um, in this recorded session that these were the things that was promised to us. I'm very disappointed that Mr. Purdy, Purdy wasn't didn't show up to speak on behalf of this conditional use request. Um, but at the same time, uh, we had successful meetings with him, with the church, with the residents of Beautiful Street, as well as Mr. Uh, Pastor uh, Ford, who also lives on Bird Deck, where this property will stand in between. Um, so um, that is all that I have to say on that. And I didn't know if any of you had any questions, because I know in the past, when it comes to CTAC, you all are concerned about where we stand. So I'm available to answer any questions that you may have at this time. Tammy. Tammy, no questions, but thank you very much. Uh, it was Mayor, good hearing for you. Okay, Mr. Tower. One question, uh, Tammy. Th this is Guy Tower. Thank you for calling in. I think the matters that you mentioned are covered in the uh, conditional use permit, with the exception of the one about the parking at the church on Sunday, which is, uh, I'll, I'll, I ask Mr. Tahan, is that something that is appropriate for inclusion in the conditional use permit or or not since that shared parking agreement isn't a part of this use itself it would be something they need to record or have memorialized outside of this process we wouldn't normally do that in a use permit well i'm concerned based on what ms rice said about approve approving this until we i, I wish the app i also he, wish the applicant he is were here, here. He no, just he didn't is. sign up with me, so yes. Oh, he's here. Could could I invite him? I, I was going to call him next after okay. you were finished, Councilman. All right. Well, I'll, I'll wait till. Yeah, I apologize. Uh, he had not signed up in advance, so thank he'll come you, on Abby, to the, the applicant's here, and I'll I'll ask him the question. If thank you'll you. just state your name, please. My name is Scott Prunty. Uh, do you want to start with a question, or would you like me to lead off? <laughs> you go ahead. Uh, so everything that Ms. Rice said uh, is accurate with all of our conversations. I've met with the CTAC Civic League three times, I believe, uh, in going through this process to make sure that, you know, we're taking care of them. Uh, it sounds like throughout time there has been a lot of times that people have told them things and then not have followed up with what they've said. So uh, I offered the parking lot for the church to use uh, on Sundays, but also if there's funeral services or something, when my employees or staff aren't using the parking lot, they can have access to it. Um, so I can put that in writing with hers so they're comfortable with me moving into their neighborhood. Uh, everything, uh, the other concern was my large trucks and delivery vehicles uh, coming beside the residential property in the front. So they asked me to bring them through Jensen Drive. I have no opposition to that, that either. And that is listed in the, in the conditions, yeah. Well. I appreciate that, Mr. Prunty, very much, and thank you for being here, and thank you for your for meeting with the folks at SeaTac. They have told me that you've been a, gracious to meet with them, and they appreciate uh, appreciate your listening to their concerns and acting on them. And uh, I hope you will follow up, if you would, just with a letter to Ms. Rice uh, confirming the part about the 
serv <coughs> uh, services. Most certainly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roush. I just want to echo the sentiments of Councilman Tower there. I, I saw you a couple times at uh, the Civic Lead and just wanted to say thank you for being a, a model applicant as well and working um, with the community to, to make sure we found the, um, the, these proffers and, and finding uh, this partnership. So um, I think a, a lot of other applicants, if they're watching, they can learn a lot from um, just your proactive stance of meeting with the community head on before it even got to council um, for a vote tonight. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rouse. Hey, thanks a bunch. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. Mr. Tower. I move approval of the application. Second. Okay, approval. Any discussion? Let's vote on it. Mr. Moss, thank you. By a vote of 11 to 0, you have approved the application. All right, I guess uh, the final item for the night is at, uh, item uh, planning 6, which is Alinea Westleach, Alvin and Christina Ali Westleach. For a conditional use permit of a residential kennel on 4512 Whitechapel Court, District 9, formerly District 4, Bayside. Um, Ms. Wesley, the applicant. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for hearing me tonight. Um, my kennel application is, uh, so I wasn't sure of all the agenda items, so I'm still a bit checked up earlier, I apologize. Um, my kennel application is for rescue rehabilitation and rehoming of animals that are typically overlooked in your shelter communities. Um, I've been doing rescue rehabilitation since 2008. I've, you know, partnered with local SPCA, some local rescues um, within the area, as well as rescues outside of the state that I have um, brought in one of their animals to work with specifically because of behavioral modifications that were needed. Um, the animals that are currently at my location, I now have seven on site, which is, of course, above the limit of four in the city of Virginia Beach. Um, this was brought to our attention a while ago. Um, I am not the property owner. The property owner didn't take actions, and now I am taking, that's why there's a slash with the names behind me. I'm the applicant, not the property owner. Um, I do live at the residence and have my entire life. Um, I'm asking that this be approved so that I can continue working with the three animals that I currently have up for adoption. Um, this is not asking, you know, to keep them permanently on residence. I've heard the Planning Commission's um, suggestions, modifications to the kennel license where once an animal leaves the property, another animal will not come back to the property. While this is not conducive to my mission, my goal to rehabilitate and rehome these animals, um, it does give me time to continue working with the animals on site until I can find a location, which I am currently looking for right now with my business partner um, for Misfits and Underdog Sanctuary. I have three. They are um, currently available um, on various website forums, and those are the three that I'm asking this conditional permit for so that I can finish their training so that they can pass CGC if possible, if not to find the right home, right fit for them, being that they are larger dogs. Um, I found that this was something that was necessary or needed, having volunteered for so many years with different shelters, that there's that one dog that's just overlooked or mislabeled as aggressive or with prey drive, when that's really not the case. You know, it's a lot that goes into these animals that makes them the way that they are. It takes a lot to rehabilitate them to be the perfect pet that you see in Hallmark movies, you know. So it's just a lot that goes into it. It is very tedious, time-consuming. And that's what I'm asking for tonight, is to continue working with the three animals that I have, um, keeping my kennel license to allow me to have seven animals on site, where I will agree to, once the animal is adopted out, not replace it. I will then move to the business site location. And if that comes up, if we get the business site location, then these three animals will be housed there, not at my residence. Any questions, Mr. Small? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you've done a great job. You've answered a lot of my questions, but I want to come back. So it looks like you don't need a conditional use permit indefinitely. You need it for a period of time. That is a very accurate statement, yes, sir. Okay. And what do you think that period of time is, one year, two years? So with the three animals that I have, being that I'm not taking on any new 
animal cases right now. I do believe that one year is a very feasible goal for me. Um, I, in the past month alone, I've already had two animals adopted out successfully. So that's just from when I put my application in to this meeting. Now you have five dogs of your own. No, sir. That's been uh, mended. Um, I did a behavioral analysis with all the animals, saw how they got along, how they were around um, the handicapped individual in my home. And so with that being said, wanting to keep the permanent, you know, residence as well as be you know, conscientious to my neighbors, I did um, decide to put one of them five up for adoption. Well, I thank you so much. So what I would, if he is successful, I think if you don't, I don't want to say if you, you may not get rid of them in a year, but what I would like to do if it's acceptable is to approve it when you're on the condition that if you haven't been able to get rid of all three dogs yet, that the our good planning director would continue uh, giving, granting you that conditional use permit until such time as you were able to get those and then the conditional use permit would be vacated. Was that, would it be acceptable to you? That's acceptable to me, but I do ask something, um, I guess, they stated that in order to have this conditional use permit for a kennel license that I had to put up a seven foot privacy fence. Now that was part of it, putting in the privacy fence. I've gone through permits and had to, and I would have to back my yard in 30 feet away from the street on both sides. I would just like to take that portion out if I'm staying with the four dogs. Yeah. It's the end goal. Well, it's interesting because I did talk to your next door neighbor, the gentleman, John. John Williams. Wheelchair. Right. Very nice gentleman. I saw where he put up a big fence. Yes. I chatted with him at great length. Very interesting fellow, which I'm sure you know. Yes. And uh, he said his only issue was uh, the dogs outside barking. Mm-hmm. And, I'm, and I've been by there myself, so I know it does happen. It does happen, and it I'm not going to try and tell you that no, it doesn't. I, mean, that's a, I like honest people. That's great. I just ask you to pay attention to that. But if we are, and I know fences are extremely expensive, and I don't know if that is actually a requirement. I'm looking to the director if that's actually a requirement. Or no, it, it was only one of the recommended conditions. Okay. okay. Well, I, I believe that, that common sense makes sense, and having someone in this time of day have to make that big expense if your neighbors, since you have a one year, aren't complaining and they weren't opposed to the, I would ask that that uh, condition be removed and not put an expense for a temporary thing on the applicant. And so that would be my motion that it be for one year, subject to renewal only if they haven't, all the dogs haven't been gone, it's <coughs> gone, it's gone, but that the fence requirement be removed. We second. Oh, second. I'm sorry, hey, we have one more speaker. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. Yeah, oh, so. but thank yeah. you were very eloquent. No, that was great. Thank you, you so much. Job. Thank you. Good stuff. Uh, nice Bar job. Barbara Massner. Oh, I can forget. The only one that doesn't know due process. Oh, my. She says I'm signed up for everything I am. And this goes back to, you know, everybody in the neighborhood doesn't know what's going on. And this brings back you going to SeaTac? You know, do you have any idea how many people drive on Birdneck Road and people that, you know? Um, Could you please stick to the? I am talking about due process and conditional use permits. Speak to the item. Okay, then don't here. take up my time. Speaker. Then don't Oliver. take up my time. I heard you the first time. Thank you. Okay. I oppose this. There, there's even the city is in the business of recycling. That's why there's so many dogs. People may adopt them, but they bring them right back. The military, there's no rules. There's no training. We used to have uh, animal control. Now it's adoption. It's open, you know, on holidays. It's a twenty billion dollar industry. We didn't have problems with you know, fecal contamination of our beach. You have tractors cleaning the beach because you allow dogs to, to urinate and have fecal mess all over the beach. It's a health condition. It's a health problem. Um, yeah, New Hope takes dogs that are unwanted. Um, Evelyn's Wildlife, there's plenty of places. It shouldn't be in everyone's neighborhood. And just because one neighbor you know, is speaking out. Everyone probably doesn't know what's going on. So I'm opposed in uh, the SeaTac people and other communities. People drive in all neighborhoods, 
people uh, doing business, there isn't enough parking on our streets. Since you allowed short-term rentals on top of everything else, and business vehicles in residential neighborhoods. There's, there's way too much, and there aren't enough police, fire, rescue, animal control. I think there was one animal control from Rudy Inlet all the way around uh, to Shore Drive, Lesnar Bridge on a quad, and that was like 10 years ago. So there isn't enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the speakers, sir. Mr. Moss. Right. That we got the motion. My motion answer. remains on the table as I said. Okay, yeah. second. Do we have a second? Okay. Any other discussion? The vote is open. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. John, that was five vote of nicely done. Five vote of eleven to zero. You have approved the application as amended. <coughs> okay, great. Rosemary. We have appointments. Appointments. Okay, so uh, we have appointments for the uh, Resort Advisory Commission. Uh, Del Sino Miles, Deepak Naknami, Damon Watson, and Robert Malati. Is that it? Okay, vote is open. Mr. Moss, are you voting yes? Well, I thought, well, it's only for RAC. Okay, then no. Thank you. By vote of 10 to 1, Mr. Boss, Councilmember Moss voting nay, you have approved the appointments okay. read by Vice Mayor Wilson. Any old business? Mr. Rouse, new business. Uh, wait, what's going on? I've been reading stuff in the paper. Hey, listen, it's been such a long day. I have my statement ready, and I just <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll give you the uh, <laughs> I'll give you the short the short version of it um, pretty soon. It's just oh well, here we are, uh, Mr. Mayor, and, and thank you for this time. I prepared the statement, and as you all have have may have heard by now, um, this will be my, my last term on this body. Um, serving Virginia Beach on City Council during an unprecedented, unprecedented era of challenges and hardships has taught me so much about our city. It's taught me about the resilience of our citizens, our workers, our businesses, and our students, teachers, and parents. It's demonstrated the importance of government stepping up for its citizens and providing meaningful, proactive solutions. In, that, in other words, what the government can do for its people. Most of all, it showed just how strong we are. As a community, we came together. That's what service has always been about. It's been about bringing neighbors together and bringing stakeholders together to find what we have in common and move our community forward together. I have so much respect for my colleagues on this body. We haven't always seen eye to eye, but where we could find commonality, we did so enthusiastically. And I'm grateful for that. It's been the privilege of a lifetime to serve the city that's given me so much, especially as a councilman. And I look forward to continuing that role as a public servant for the next nine months. However, after a great deal of reflection with my family and faith and community leaders and other fellow public servants, I've decided to embark on a journey of service to our community in another capacity. I've already announced, and I'm proud to announce again, that I'm running for Virginia Beach Net State Senate in the newly created 22nd District. The most important factor for me choosing not to seek re-election to City Council this year is the people. With the city transitioning to true districts, it is ever more important that the people have the option to elect a representative that can fulfill a full term with the focus on them, the people. Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, fellow council members, city manager, city attorney, city clerk, and staff, thank you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to continuing my service on council with you all and finishing strong. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, Aaron, I think on behalf of the council and a lot of people that you have reached out to help, especially in underserved committees, you did, you're a stellar guy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All righty. Okay, at this point, we're adjourned. Only the person